Uh, welcome, everybody. MJ and the crew, 6 o'clock exactly here on the MJ Morning Show, Q105 Radio Tampa Bay on a Friday. Yep. Hey, uh, no date night for me tonight. Yep. No, no Friday date night. Michelle and I are going to have date lunch. Oh. Yeah. M- Michelle made a suggestion that, hey, let's have date lunch and then we'll have the whole night open for a couple of movies and. Well, we got to kind of finish up The Crown because we're, we're kind of late on The Crown. And I think we're just in season three now. Anyway, so she thought maybe we'd catch up on that because, you know, the last and final season of The Crown is getting ready to drop. I just heard a commercial ran on our show yesterday from Netflix. Oh. And if you remember, Michelle and I went to visit Chloe when she was doing her overseas uh, year at St. Andrews. In Scotland, Chloe did her whole junior year over there. We called her a couple of times on the year. And while we were out there last March, do you remember? Yeah, they were filming. A yeah, piece. They, they were filming Kate and William meeting at St. Andrews. In fact, Chloe took us to this little like cafe right on the main strip right there in St. Andrews. She took us to this little cafe where Prince William and Kate Kate Middleton had their first date. So it's kind of cool. When you first started to say yeah. you had no date night and you said, we have no date night today. Instead, we have date l and you hung on the L a little too long. And I thought you were saying date love instead of date lunch. What do you mean I hung on the L a little? Hold on. Uh, yeah. no, hold on to that thought a second. So, Fester, you're right. They were fi- When we were out there to visit Chloe last March, they were filming The Crown. And I even got some video of them filming The Crown. They had a drone up in the air. They had a couple of cars going down uh, one of the streets at St. Andrews with a police escort, like two motorcycle guys. So I want to kind of catch up and get to where they are in The Crown so we can see that episode fairly quickly because we're on the side. I don't Maybe, hey. Who knows? Maybe we're even seen on the the side when they're filming this thing. I I don't know. It's like your extras. Yeah. Oh my god! Hey. It's a British gremlin in the background. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a hobbit. It's a hobbit. It's a modern <laughs> hobbit. <laughs> it's Lord of the Rings mixed with the crown. <laughs> so hey, right. Michelle and I might be visible in one of the final episodes of the Crown. Wow. On Netflix. Who the hell knows? I I don't know. All right. Busy Friday show today. Hal Herman headlines. I'm excited. Hal Herman will make an appearance later this morning. Of course, this is the music that signifies Hal Herman headlines on the MJ Morning Show. Now, Froggy, have you been in communication with Hal? Is he going to do normal time for Hal Herman headlines? I haven't, I haven't heard from him yet this morning. I'm well, that's not good. I know. I'm waiting to hear from him. But sure, I mean, I'm sure he'll be fine with that. Does he know that he's scheduled to do headlines? I haven't told him yet. <laughs> well, I got to text him. <laughs> wait a minute. I'll let him know. Well, what if it's not written? Oh, that might be an issue. <laughs> yeah. No, he always has his team on it. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, yeah, Hal. Thank God for his team. Hal's uh, a star. They hand him the script. So when do you plan to text yourself? I, I'm, I'm sorry. When, when do you plan to text Hal Herman? Uh, I'll text him here during the break. See how he's holding up. <laughs> right. I'll wake him up. Did he have an all-nighter? Probably. Did he he probably a, just went to sleep. Did he have a bender? Well, he likes to walk around the USF campus for some reason. <laughs> what? I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. What about the fact that the, the Hard Rock is getting roulette and craps yeah. this That's weekend? Right. excited about that. Is, is he excited about that? Very. Yeah. He gets lost in the casino. Yeah. So listen, I've been saying for a long time that you know my casino game is craps. So I've got a pretty shortly get to the hard rock to try out some craps you know it's uh, and we'll get into this later on cuz uh, you know, they absolutely had the craps tables and the roulette tables they they absolutely had that stuff in storage you know probably for years now because remember there were some false starts on when the the hard rock locally would get craps and roulette to add to the you know the stable of other games and the, the interesting dynamics with the pact with the Seminole tribe and the state and what was allowed, what wasn't allowed. Blackjack was okay, but craps was not. So it's all 
all coming around now. So, what, today? Today's the 8th, yeah. Today's the day. Yeah, today's the day. And we talked about this, I don't know, a month ago or so. So today is the day that the Hard Rock gets uh, my game. Uh, did it kick off at midnight? I mean, does that mean people have been playing for six hours? I don't know. Why don't you, uh, why why don't don't you take leave? a ride over there real quick and, and, and give me a full report on that? It's the best idea we've ever had. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. you right. got an issue if you show up and that thing opens and you're still going. Well, what if you go Thursday yeah. night and it's hey, midnight now? Hey, I, I've had some eight, ten-hour crap sessions out in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Well, do they... Uh, here's the question. Do they pump a lot of oxygen into... That's the, a that's an old casino myth. Is it a myth? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. No clocks. No yeah, clocks. No, no windows. Yeah, listen, there's a whole, right, bunch of, whole bunch of casino myths, you know, came out of old Vegas, and I don't know. I, I haven't seen anything definitive that they're pumping oxygen into if, the casino. If they catch you stealing, they will pop your eyeball out with a vice <laughs> yeah. grip. Yeah. If you use a monkey paw... <laughs> to uh, try to rip off a slot machine, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna put your head in a vice. They're gonna what? Take a yeah. take a, a bandsaw and cut off digits like uh, like in the movie Casino. Man, that's such you a you make good, me pop yeah. your eyeball out for that. Eh? That's such a good. Oh, you know what? I just thought of something. Hmm. What? I never got my book Casino back from Nick Reader. Who? Yeah. yeah hey, if partner. if anyone sees Nick Reader today, <laughs> uh, tell Nick I, I want my Casino book back. No, I had the 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 Pelleggi book, a Casino, which the movie was based on. He also wrote Goodfellas, and obviously uh, Martin Scorsese, uh, big fan of uh, Nick Pelleggi, Nicholas Pelleggi, and you know he wrote both those books, and both of those books were turned into movies. Anyway, so yeah, I got to get to the Hard Rock. I know there's a, I got an invite for this weekend. It's just a jammed up weekend because. Oh, we're getting ready for you know holiday break and everything. But I I I, I don't know if I if I'm going to get to the Hard Rock today or tomorrow. Or but certainly you know at some point I want to go uh, roll the bones, man. Oh, so you're planning on going this weekend? No, no, okay, I, yeah, no, no, I don't no. Know if get there today or tomorrow. No, no, I no. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there this weekend. But I I'm very excited. Okay. And listen, I'm not like a. I'm not like a degenerate gambler or anything. It's like you not know I, I I haven't played craps. Since uh, I, I took another Indian tribe for uh, like two, three grand out in uh, Wisconsin. Remember? I, <laughs> remember that story? <laughs> I took Chloe up to... Uh, a soccer tournament or something. No, no. She was doing a, uh, a soccer showcase deal. Oh, a showcase, not a or tournament. So, she was doing something up in, right. up in uh, Wisconsin, up in Milwaukee at... Uh, what's the name of that? Uh, Marquette. And uh, right across from the soccer dome at Marquette was this Indian casino, and uh, they had full craps and everything, and I rolled in there, put, put 300 bucks on the table. I walked out with like three grand. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, Daddy, where were you? Oh, I'm, I'm across the street rolling the dice. So yeah, that's the last time I played it. I think that's three years ago. So clearly, I've not played craps in three years. Clearly, I I don't have a gambling issue, but I'm excited to, you know, maybe, you know, every you know month or a couple of, you know, Every couple of months, you know, go roll some bones at the the Hard Rock with craps is here, which just, uh, that's my game. All right, let me hey, hold on to that thought. Roxanne, you're leaving early today. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Uh, all right, so Roxanne's leaving early. Fessy, you got something to blab about. No, 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 hold on, right. folks. We're back in minutes. We're just getting started. So I'll pick up with these two next on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Let's grab traffic with Pat. We're back in a second. What up, you?
MJ Morning Show, Q105. MJ with Roxanne Fester Froggy here on Friday. Andrew's here. Uh, I got to address uh, Andrew, our producer, being here today, and we'll do that a little later on. First, though, did that jolt anybody? You think anyone listening to the radio uh, just was just jarred and jolted and with my explosion sound effect? What comes to mind with this early morning explosion sound? Anything come to mind from any recent activity? Froggy? Uh, Fester? Explosion. It's um, a lot of explosions, by the way. Yeah, yeah you might want to stop. I mean, it's people, getting annoying. People have their alarm right. clock right. set to wake up at this time. First thing they hear are explosions. Uh is it the story of uh, the house in Virginia that yeah, exploded? Yeah, mm. yeah. I was just trying to see if there any more information to come out about that. And Anything? I guess the guy was like spewing all kinds of conspiracy theories, and uh, cops went to his house because he was firing like nautical flares all through the neighborhood. Shot like forty flares. Bro, you're the only boat owner that I that I associate with on a regular basis. Yes. How many flares do you have on hand? I have a lot of flares on my boat. I got a whole big <laughs> box of every, all the essentials. How many flares? How many flares are in a box? Like 40? Oh, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, like five. Do you oh, have an okay. E-perb? Yeah, I do. What's, it, what's an E-perb? E-perb, that's a, a little it's a radio a, a positioning device. So if your boat is going down and if your boat is sinking, the E-perb will activate... And it'll like alert the Coast Guard where you are. Not that I ever go out anywhere where I can't see land. But <laughs> Froggy's of the Dunedin Causeway. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <We're> going down. <laughs> help! Any ships at sea, help me. Uh, you know. Upper Tampa Bay, we don't really need to worry about that. Yeah. Anyway, so this Virginia dude who, and some reports are like, he's presumed to have been killed. Uh, no, I, I heard a report from authorities up in Arlington, Virginia, where they found his body parts uh, scattered through the neighborhood. Can you imagine that? Go out to your backyard, here's your crazy neighbor's head, you know? Hey, honey. I mean, I may not want a head in my yard, but... Fa- found some hands. I would take a foot. Got a yeah. finger. Got a, got a yeah. foot over here. Got some... Uh, oh, I think this is a middle finger knuckle right here. Uh, but the guy was like blabbing all kinds of conspiracy theories, and he had filed frivolous lawsuits, including one that accused his witch ex wife of committing him against his will. Then he started shooting flare guns or flares, like 30 or 40 flares through the neighborhood. The cops show up after they got a search warrant from a local judge. And as the cops were there, and I guess knocking on the door for the search warrant, this guy blows the place up. And luckily, I I don't think the cops were right at the front door, but they were out in the street and he blew the house up. And I I haven't seen what he used to blow his house up, but the craziest freaking thing. Folks, do you really, this is what it comes down to. Do you really know what the hell is living next door to you? When it really matters, do you know what kind of, Roxanne, what kind of nut jobs do you have next door to you in West Chase? No, you know what? It's funny you say that. I remember when I built my house and I just looked at all the slabs of concrete around the neighborhood and you realize like kind of how close they are to one another. Oh, you build your house. Yeah. And then you Ooh. look and you're like, I mean, this is years and years ago. How and- old is your house? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. You built your house. Like, I, don't I don't know. know. 15. Well, I'm going to make myself feel old if I say it, so I'm not going to say it. So, well, well, wait anyway, a second. Well, no, hold I, on. I think it's like 15 years old. So you yeah. built your house or like you went to like the sales office and you picked the model you precisely, wanted? Precisely, precisely. And then you picked your lot? Yes, exactly. Right, gotcha. And so I did, but I remember standing on that slab of concrete and looking to my right. And oh, my your and, house is pre-dug? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. I didn't know that. Was it with the old husband? Oh, boy. 
Or was uh, it after the old the husband? We, we don't talk about this. That 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 part of my life doesn't... The ghost yeah, of your old husband yeah. still rooms that house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, see, you see what you get for contributing the, to the wait, show, wait, Roxanne. Yeah, I know. Wait, wait, why, why does everything have but, to turn into like a no, deep dive no, of my the, past? Because you, you brought up your old my husband house. this week. Yeah, I know. I'm just teasing. Uh, um, <laughs> but listen, no, this is the important part. Yeah. I remember, to your point, I remember standing on that slab and realizing how close the other slabs were and and that we're like all in these little boxes living our little lives doing various <laughs> things and nobody really knows what's happening next door we all live in these little boxes you're standing on the concrete <laughs> slab it's essentially true yeah. right yeah i don't Kinda know what goes weird. on that box next to me no no clue <laughs> no clue anyway this dude apparently had all kinds of warning signs and all kinds of weirdness and i want to know what blew this guy's house to kingdom come what caused this thing to blow up like a gas explosion anyway remember remember his name yo you you y o o this dude james you who uh well apparently resting in pieces because you know <laughs> all over the neighborhood i mean real i mean i'm sorry to be a little graphic there all right, so Roxanne, you are leaving the show early today. I am, and I'm so sorry, but you guys will do fine without me for two hours. We survived without Froggy for two days. Oh, wait, 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 we survived wait, wait, without yeah, Fester for a yeah, whole four days yeah, last the, week. The, it was the, tough, the but show, we did it. The show will go, uh, yeah. go on. What, we'll what, what is the constant around here? Fester was out for like a whole week. Uh, <laughs> you you left us because your kid was singing some song. Yeah, uh, today. You, today. I'm no, no, no. You, you, you left us up like three weeks ago. What was that? What one? are you talking about? A right. month ago, you, you left us early. Really? You, had, you or you didn't come in. I, you, no, you left no, us. No, that's, that's a future thing. That's no, 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 happen. no, no. You <laughs> left us at like seven o'clock or something, like a month. You okay. had, a, you had another event. What was I'll the? I have other? to read my diary. No, 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 Roxanne. I, I don't remember. Okay. Ro- hold on, this is wait a minute. I, I remember <laughs> stuff your kids do, but you don't. The whole lot of it. It was an award you, ceremony. You, you or left. Something. You had a le- no, no. You had to read to your kids' class. Oh yes. Oh my. See, she, that was a Thursday. I took the whole day off. Yeah, that was that was early. That was a while. Ago. Yeah, you, you took the whole day. It was, it was a month. like two months ago. What kind of ago. time warp are you living in? It was a month ago. Two months month, ago. Yeah. So you, you you had to read to your. Well, this is what's bizarre. And listen, I'm not chastising you for being a mother. We've it all, sounds that way. We've all been there. No, it doesn't it, sound it, that it way. It does kind of sound that well, way. Well, hang on. Here's the deal. You got a three year old kid, mm-hmm. and Roxanne was to read to the three year old kid's preschool class. Mm-hmm. And. The schedule is so strict and stringent <laughs> that the teacher couldn't move it to like a Friday where we were not going to be here, or a Wednesday where I try. Oh, that was it was October. That's what it was. Yeah, it was October twenty fourth or something. Gosh, two months All ago. Right, so uh, a month and a half. Well, a month and a half ago. So that's right. You were so because focused on this. I was in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, shooting TV segments with uh, Stephen Elizabeth Holland from the Holland Group, which are going to start airing, I believe, in January. Oh, I can't wait. And yes. I had to go out there on Wednesday, so we weren't on that day. I came back, and then Thursday we were here live, but then you took off. Yes, I and did. And then Friday, you, your preschool teacher could not let you read to the class on Wednesday or Friday. It had to be the Thursday where we were all back, but you weren't. Okay. It was just bizarre because, so, you know, we're talking about a priest. Oh, no, our, our schedule is just so important. It is so structured. We, we have got to get a, a an order from the governor in order to <laughs> let you move your reading session. How, how long did you spend reading to the class? Like 20 minutes. Okay, first of all, I so appreciate that yeah. you you were it's a big party in here and you're like the little mother duckling and you want all your ducklings in here and I appreciate that. What? But like go, he, you want go, everyone to be here I don't for go the to party. parties with ducks? No, okay. But I needed that day off. I just needed it off. And, uh, and all this I, because she's leaving today a little bit yeah. early. And, I, and, and then and you're leaving I'm not even using all my vacation this year. I'm leaving it on the table. Some I, of it. Well, guess what? I'm suckers. leaving vacation on the table. Both of you guys are suckers. I'm leaving uh I'm leaving I think I got to check with Michelle, but I think I'm leaving close to a week yeah. on okay. the table that, that I didn't take this year. Yeah, still, you were never employee of the month. <laughs> you know, I, I have never been employed. Yeah, never see. over at iHeart Clear Channel. I was never employee of the month. Yeah. Uh, I, I have the I have the I have the record of bringing in the most revenue of any morning show <laughs> over at uh, over at iHeart. 
and Clear Channel, but I never had Employee of the Month. How does that happen? And, and I've been here now three years, and I've never had Employee of the Month uh, honors bestowed upon me here at the Beasley Media Group. So I'm pissed. Okay, so this is a great point you're making for me because my daughter is Student of the Month. And that's why I'm leaving oh, early. Oh. And so that's a, like they're only nine months uh, of the year, so oh. not all the kids get it. So uh, it might not happen next year. This is no, like a there, once. There are twelve months in the year. No, 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 nine year? months for but, school but year. You didn't, you didn't delineate that. Well, okay, nine months in that she would possibly right, be awarded right. because she doesn't go to summer school. <laughs> all right. Now, um, what time are you leaving? I'm going to try to. I'm going to keep looking at the clock to see what the traffic patterns are, or keep looking at my maps to see traffic patterns. But I'm probably going to walk out of here right about seven forty. Seven yeah. <laughs> I told you take the whole day off. Why do you even come Seriously. in today? I'm going to come back and do middays. That's uh, that's oh, how I, I'm dedicated. Sh- I am. I'm sure you are. Yeah, a right. dedicated employee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're leaving. Yeah, you're, my, my little, well, well, hold on. I thought you said earlier in the week you're leaving at eight o'clock. I said before eight o'clock, but I said no, it really fast. I was like, I'm leaving before no, eight o'clock. No, before eight o'clock. Whatever. Listen, you, I'm here. Well, you, I'm just here. leave now. Just okay. go now. Pick him up on it. You know, Pick him up on just, it. Just, just walk out right now. Okay, bye. All right, six thirty-one at the MJ Morning Show. Early morons of the news next. Well, here we go with our first big problem of the morning.
It is 6.39 at the MJ Morning Show. MJ and the gang here. Uh, Fester, uh, what are you chewing on over there, Fester? Uh, I wasn't chewing on anything. I took a... We have... Did you know that we have... But as it a, looked like you were chewing on. on something. Did you know, yeah. as an employee benefit here, we have <laughs> complimentary hot chocolate packets. Yeah, I know that. Okay, well, I yeah. I guess I just saw them for the first time this season, and I made a cup of hot chocolate, and uh, I used two packets because, you know. Oh, they, you got, like, floating chunks yeah. of, uh, like, powder pustules? Little chocolate grit? Yeah, powder pustules. That are, <laughs> and, uh, is just, that a thing? Is that a word? Yeah, well, I, I guess I didn't stir it enough. It, it is now. It's a good no, one. I'm going to write that it, down. If you use a lot of powder, because I've always been one to typically make the hot chocolate with Two packets. Yes. <laughs> really make it extra chocolatey. But you got to stir. Yeah. So you have to add a little, you got to make a paste initially. Mm. So in order to do that, especially in the, like these little white styrofoam, non-environmentally friendly cups that we have, what, um, <laughs> how many ounces? Are those six ounces? Are those eight ounces? You, you can get eight in there because I measured it. I mean, okay. If you fill it to the, it's like eight. almost to the top, yeah, it's To eight. the brim, it's Okay. Eight. All right. But you have to add the hot water slowly, make a paste to get a full dissolve scenario. Well, so you got to get a full dissolve scenario in order to, you know, or else if you've got too much powder in your case, Fester, you're going to end up with those undissolved powder pustules that are just going to be kind of floating like orbs. Like that float around Roxanne's house, apparently. Right. So yeah. anyway, Orb, orbs. I had a. I suddenly had a, a yeah. mouthful of chocolate powder everywhere, and I just had to gotcha. do a hard swallow. So gotcha. that's it. Hey, for the early crowd, I'm just going to throw this out. Remember at the beginning of the show, before I get to early morons of the news. Remember at the beginning of the show, I said that Michelle and I were going to go to date lunch today. Yes. Yeah. Hey, folks, if you want to join us, I, I don't know if Michelle's going to be happy about this, well, but she won't be. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't put that invitation out if I were you. Why not? Because, uh, I mean, you're, I'm not, you're not going to sit at our table because I'm going to get a two-top. But if you'd like to, like, show up where we're going to show up to have lunch, have at it. 
What do you want, Legally Blind Mike to just pop in there? Oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? He will. He I, will. I, I mean, I, it's I, really going to get awkward. I, I, legally Blind Mike. Got to pick up your his cup for him so he uh, can take a sip. LBM, if you're listening right now, where's where's LBM's jingle? <laughs> let, let, let me find Legally Blind Mike's jingle. I've got it here somewhere on one of my 27 pages. Uh, here we go. Here it is. Legally Blind Mike. Legally Blind Mike. Say Mikey Crash. So remember, LVM when I when I said I was going to go to the Colony Grill uh, to grab you know a great Stamford, Connecticut, the Colony Grill pie up at Midtown in Tampa. Legally Blind Mike took an Uber. I got a like a forty dollar Uber ride just to have lunch with. Anyway, so listen, I'm just going to say it, Roxanne. I, you don't think it's a good idea? Why not? Listen, I just put myself in Michelle's shoes, and I would yeah. I would. Right, Say, me, do you want to spend I, time with me or do you want to spend time with your listeners? Right, let me be clear. You can't sit at my table, all right? But <laughs> I'm I'm happy to say hello to any listener. I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, Michelle had a great idea, and we're going to go to lunch today at the Nona Slice House over in Safety Harbor on Main Street. And they open at noon a couple of days a week. I think like uh, Friday, Saturday. They open at noon for lunch. So we're going to go. Yeah, the Nona Slice House, which is on Main Street in beautiful downtown Safety Harbor. Michelle and I are going to be there for lunch at 12 noon today. Okay, if you guys have a really long, like, drinking lunch and it just goes until, like, 5 o'clock. I'm not going to have a long drink. <laughs> nice. I'm not going to be day having a drink. <laughs> I'm not going to be day drinking. I will, I will have water and we might order a couple of pizzas because, you know, they've got the three different style pies there. They've got the New York, the Neapolitan, and they got the Detroit. You're ordering three pizzas? No, no, no. Pig. No, no. Well, I'll probably. <laughs> well, here's the, Listen, I'll probably order two and we're going to bring some home because we're not doing date night. We're doing date lunch, and we're going to be watching movies or catching up on The Crown because the new season the season's going to drop. So uh, I'll have some pizza to bring home as well. So listen, i got to do early morons in the news. But, hey, Michelle and I are going to be at the Nona Slice House for lunch at 12 noon today in Safety Harbor. They have no idea I'm coming. Well, I guess now they do. But uh, it, listen, if you want to stop by, have some pizza and say hello, uh, you know, I'm not picking up your tab. But you're not sitting at my table. But I, <laughs> This is the worst lunch invitation ever. <laughs> but but, but I, I, listen, I'm very friendly. I say hi to everybody. Yeah. You know, when people come up to me, I'm like, hey, listen, don't bother me. No, no, I, I, I make time. Listen, I'll make time for any listener that comes by, but I, I am having lunch with my, my wife. Today. And so if you then s- why ask, you weirdo? What are you doing? It's so, it seems like such polar opposite things. You just want people to come up to you so you feel special. No, I don't. <laughs> just admit it. No, it's just, listen. You know what? If I'm out to lunch, you come up to me, I'm going to smack you in the eardrum. <laughs> <laughs> Froggy, that's nasty. Don't I love me. when people come up to me. Hey, when I went to do my uh, license uh, registration renewal at the Publix in South Tampa in the kiosk. Let me guess, the kiosk listens to the show? No, no, like, no, no, no. Are you MJ from the MJ Morning Show? No, no th- beep, beep. Three, three people came up to me. So the first, I'm walking in, and there's this dude in a, a Bucks jersey, and... Yeah, it was Kurt the teacher. You know, you know Kurt the teacher who teaches at Plan High School in South Tampa, who calls the show occasionally. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, when, when, when we have school topics, he'll call in. It's Kurt the teacher from Plan High School, and he's like, "Hey, I don't know if you recognize the voice. Hey, MJ." And I'm like, "I don't." And he's like, "Hey, I'm I'm Kurt the teacher." Well, listen, I'm not going to recognize his voice, but unless he's like, "Hello, this is Kurt the yeah, teacher," yeah. you know, unless he has some kind of crazy <laughs> I mean, voice. Who you does know. Kurt think he is? Crazy right. Dave? No, but, we'd recognize him, right? No, but you know, Kurt said hi. And then, like, two other people, as I'm talking to Kurt, two other people, hey, MJ, hey, remember me? I had the Chinese drywall problem. I'm like, yeah, I remember you. And then, hey, MJ, can you take a picture with my daughter? And so, like, in the in the, in the the vestibule area, you know, where they have the public scale and, uh-huh. and all the shopping carts, this was the Publix on Southdale Mabry uh, at Neptune. I got three people inside of 10 seconds that are, like, stopping me. And I've got no problem with it. I love it. 
So, listen, I'm going to be at the Nona Slice House with Michelle for date lunch today at 12 noon. And, listen, if you want to have lunch there as well and say hello, I'm happy to say hello to whoever stops by. Okay, if the line gets so long for people who are going to say hi to you and you end up staying there till 5 p.m., I want you to stumble over to parts of Paris. I've been telling you about that place for a long time, right. and you and Michelle would love it. Just continue your Safety Harbor uh, food tour. All right, so you want me to... Just morph lunch into dinner. Just yeah. hang out for six hours yeah. in Safety Harbor. That's what you want me to do. How about she stops by the spa and gets yeah. a gets a treatment or something? There you go. While she's there as well. Perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at my phone to see if Michelle is texting me. Like, what's the matter with you? Why are you? <laughs> oh, nothing. Nothing yet. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. I got a text from Nick Reader. <laughs> I have your book. <laughs> I donated your book to the Goodwill. Wait, wait, but I I got a text from Nick. You are this happened at six nineteen. So what happened? Oh, at, at at six o'clock this morning, we were talking about the Hard Rock and how roulette and craps begins today at the Hard Rock Tampa. And I was talking about casino and the book and the movie. And I'm like, hey. If anyone uh, sees Nick Reader today, tell him I want my uh, casino book back. And <laughs> I guess he just texted me, 619, so what, half an hour ago. You're funny. <laughs> so yeah. Either he heard it or a bunch of people heard it. Yeah, Nick, he's Nick, funny. You still have yeah, his book. Yeah, Nick, hey, get MJ his casino book back. Uh, where were we? Oh, early morons of the news. <laughs> I didn't even get to it yet. Oh, boy. Hey, speaking of food. Do you remember the story we had about the whacked out lady that threw a burrito bowl at an employee at Chipotle? You remember? Uh, there's so many stories no. like this of th- food throwing at people's faces. But yes, I think I remember that yeah, specific we one. We did this not too long ago. Well, guess what? The Ohio woman that hurled her burrito bowl at the head of a Chipotle employee. You know, they've got that Chipotle assembly line. Yeah. You know, Henry Ford came up with that. Did you know that? Yeah, actually, I saw the well, History Henry- Channel documentary. No, no, we're not talking about cars. We're talking about Chipotle. I mean, he was a really big fan of, like, you know, Mexican-themed and inspired food. Yeah. A little true. more fact. Yeah. I saw it. The Ohio wacko that threw the burrito bowl at an employee's head, and they called it piping hot in the original story. A piping hot burrito bowl. Piping hot. It melted the lettuce. It was so piping hot. It wilted everything. She was found guilty of hitting the employee in the face and head uh, and had her jail time reduced after agreeing to work at a fast food restaurant uh, as part of her sentencing. Nice. So she has to work at a fast food restaurant. Uh, that would be an awesome sentencing. She has to work at a chain fast food restaurant. I guess the judge wanted her to see, uh, you know, listen, it's, why don't you get a little taste of what it's like to work in a fast food place and, and you know, deal with tons of people and deal with monsters like you throwing food at the employees' faces? I hope she thrives and becomes like the regional manager of like 10 stores. <laughs> Yeah. She turned sales around. <laughs> Rosemary Hain, 39, was found guilty last week of assault after violently flinging her food at Emily Russell, who was working behind the counter. And they got into like this uh, obscene uh, argument where the, the customer was yelling obscenities at the employee over something. It was all caught on video. Uh, listen to this. The judge said, you didn't get your burrito bowl the way you like it. And this is how you respond. This is Parma, Ohio Municipal Court Judge Timothy Gilligan uh, said in the sentencing, this is not real housewives of Parma. This behavior is not acceptable. And Hain told the court that Russell, uh, they got into the altercation at the at the, the store. So yeah. Hain, uh, who was found guilty, apparently apologized to Russell, the employee, for throwing the, the bowl. Um uh, and went on to say the food she was given looked disgusting uh, and, and, well, threw the bowl at the employee's face and head. And now we have a sentencing and yeah, she's going to do a little time. Um, and then it includes less actual jail time. So the judge sentenced Hain to 180 days in jail. That's a long time. Suspended 90. 
Okay. So she's still going to do three months in jail in Ohio, but it was lessened because she has to work at a fast food restaurant. Who's going to hire her? Certainly not this Chipotle. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I don't know who the hell's going to hire Work at the her. Burger King or something? Work at the Subway? Yeah. But you know what? I like creative sentencing like that. Yeah. I, I like judges that'll whip out uh, some creative sentencing. So she has to work. Let's see. Gilligan, the judge, told Hain he would give her her 60 days jail credit if she agreed to work at least 20-hour weeks at a fast food restaurant for two months. So she's got to do at least 60 days and 20 hours a week. A community service at a fast food restaurant. Hey, speaking of judges, yep. you know about Judge uh, Frank Caprio? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. He, I love this guy. All right, why don't you uh, fill me in on Judge? You don't know about Judge Frank? Why don't you I, watch I, the clock, I, I, bro? I, I, hold on, watch the clock. This is only a small tease. I'll tell you what. <laughs> this is a small tease. I don't get into long hey, dialogues. I'll tell you. What. You fill me in on Judge Caprio when we get back. Oh, in I a know minute. the clock. I give a small tease here. He and, goes to commercial, and I still have additional morons in the news that we have to do. So hold on. All that is coming up. On the MJ Morning Show here on Q105.
late so <laughs> typically i'd have that one buffer song here but uh i i've, I've decided yeah no no song here froggy tell yeah. roxanne no song <laughs> yeah uh, we're, we're just coming right back out and uh, folks i just had a very awkward conversation with fester awkward with me nothing yeah. i can't believe you i'm talking about a judge in ohio who sentenced that woman that threw the burrito bowl at the employee's head at Chipotle, I'm talking about how the judge came up with a creative sentence and the judge suspended half of the 180-day, six-month sentence, suspended half of it if the perpetrator, the, the perp that threw the burrito bowl at the Chipotle employee's head, if she works at a fast food restaurant, for 20 hours a week for 60 days to kind of get a feel for what it's like to work in fast food. Right. And then Fess is like, oh, man, do you know about Judge Caprio? Do you know about Judge? Do you, first of all, you don't know who Judge Caprio I is. I don't know who Judge Caprio is. So then I'm like delving during the commercial break. I'm like, God, Fess, what's this Caprio thing? And it's like, well, he's a judge in Providence. He's got pancreatic cancer. I'm like, what? Okay, hold on. Wait, how, how, you can't just gloss over this. First what, of all, what, what, Judge Caprio 
internet superstar for his very original and very compassionate and very uh, innovative sentences, which is right up your alley. I can't believe you don't know who Judge Caprio is. No, I don't know. I know Judge Judy is. I know who Judge Joe Brown was. Uh, uh, Who's the lady that's on the bench? Other than Judge Judy, there's the other lady. Uh, the, some other judge, like okay. I know some of these other judge shows. Well, all these other judge shows are we, shows. They're we, fake shows. We hit peak judge show, like what eight years ago, ten years ago, and I, we're kind of on the judge show decline now, right? I mean, don't we have like Judge Steve Harvey now or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, that was that was awful. It's a joke. Everything's uh, a- yeah. I mean, like Steve Harvey didn't have enough crap going on. Does he still do radio, or is that is that over? Does he still do a morning radio I, I, show? I, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. But I mean, they, Steve Harvey's doing Family Feud. He's doing this. He's doing that. Yeah, and then they they did a judge show with Steve Harvey. That what was is great. it? Oh man, uh, Steve Harvey. People love him. Let's just let's just invent just crazy TV crap just to have his his face full of massive teeth on TV. <laughs> You're sentenced to brushing my teeth for a year straight. <laughs> no, no, not hard labor. <laughs> All right, so in a year, you only get half done. Yeah. Judge Caprio is a I'm real telling judge. You, the, the average human being, oh, right? God. Yes. Humans have 32 teeth in their mouth. Well, the, the, well, it depends if you have your wisdom well, teeth or not. Well, you're well, supposed. You're listen, you're wisdom. born with 32 teeth. Steve Harvey has 75 teeth in, in his mouth. Yes, with, without a doubt. That is true. Yeah, and I think you can see every single one of them. All right, so who's this Judge Caprio? All right. Listen, pancreatic cancer is very serious. It's one of the worst types of cancer. It's got a lower cure rate than most cancers. And I'm trying to figure out what what this has to do with the judge sentencing a lady to work in a fast, fast food yeah, restaurant after throwing a, a burrito bowl at a Chipotle lady's head. Okay, well, first of all, that judge in Ohio, very innovative sentence, but... The most famous judge online is Judge Caprio, and he is known for his very innovative sentences or his-, his Like his, what? Like holding up street signs. Listen, what? You, you, what? Have to, you have to watch his You have to watch his channel. Oh, to like embarrass up, himself? Wait a minute. Holding up street signs yeah, like- like I'm a criminal. Like, like, like yield? Uh, you have to know- well, sounds real like, creative. You like, have to know who Judge like, Caprio is. Like what? Is. Right lane ends? Right, you people what, are- what, what street signs? What, what kind of street? Like-, like uh, <laughs> Merge left. <laughs> yeah, merge left. <laughs> or <laughs> main, main street. Construction what, what, ahead. What, what is it? Holding up- str- oh, Judge Caprio. Yes. You, can, you can get into a Judge Caprio rabbit hole and watch hours of his real courtroom drama. No, I not, Yes, you can. I'm telling you. Give us one creative- I will not Sentencing. get into a rabbit hole and watch hours of Judge Caprio. Listen. To make you sit so in a squatting position? Judge for Caprio a is a famous online judge. So he's not on TV. He's just online. No, he has a show called Caught in Providence. But he's a real judge? But he's a real ju- it's a real courtroom drama. Uh, because the other Actual judge courtroom shows. courtroom stuff. It's the not other, a show. The other judge shows might be you know former judges, but now they're like entertainment peddlers. So this guy is a real Sitting judge where? In Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. And he has an enormous online following. And all of his segments are yeah. viral on YouTube and on Instagram. And I follow the judge. And I'm a big fan of the all judge. Right, so the Sounds judge stupid. anyway. Judge has cancer? So taking that from this famous judge, I wanted to give Frank Caprio my warmest wishes and best Wait, thoughts. So I'm talking about the judge yes. in Ohio and the Chipotle case. And you took the liberty to morph into Judge Caprio? The greatest judge out there. This uh, is, if, Listen, this is the judge I want to be in front of. And yesterday it came out that he was diagnosed with a PC. So, Oh, great. Thoughts and prayers, judge. That's it. <sighs> now I'm done with Judge Caprio. Great. Now we're all depressed. Yeah, pancreatic cancer. I mean, I feel terrible now. I've never yeah, heard it so referred to as PC. Way to, way yeah. to bring the show down, Fester. You're welcome. And Judge Caprio... Stupid Magnum P.I. Fat T's and, looking. T's and P's. <laughs> what, 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 You're making fun of my Hawaiian shirt again? <laughs> Every time I wear a Hawaiian shirt, Froggy whispers a fat Magnum P.I. Uh, <laughs> Every I, time. I am so looking forward to Hal Herman headlines. Froggy, have you made comment? Uh, um, uh, contact. Contact. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> he's <laughs> in an Uber. Have you, what? He's Ubering on his way now. <laughs> Is he really? Uh, well, Lyft. I don't know which one. Uh, I think he got kicked off Uber for puking in the vents. <laughs> Sort of like BJ did back in the day. Oh, yeah. Dude. Puked right in the air vent of an Uber. Yeah, that's true. No, story. no, it was a rental car. It was pre No, I'm sorry about how. Oh, no, how, 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 I'm sorry. No, no. BJ uh, did it in a rental. It was it was the the car that B, the old MJ and BJ show, folks. So the old MJ and BJ radio show back on 93, back from what, 94 until 2001. 
BJ had a company car because he was also the program director of the radio station. And it was a Saab. Was it a Saab 9-5? Was that the model? Saab, was yeah. it? Yeah, and we, we had a deal from some leasing company, and Dave Reinhardt had a company car. Joe Mama had one. Uh, well, Dave Reinhardt, he had a Mitsubishi Diamante. Remember that? He loved that car. Hello, Dave Reinhardt. <laughs> Mitsubishi he, Diamante. He, did, he loved that car, man. And then BJ had a Saab 9-5, and BJ... Threw up and it all went into. He like projectiled into the air conditioning vents. You could not ride in that car because it was just like you turn the thing on, it just blew vomit smell. It was the worst. How do you get rid of that? I guess you have to trash the car. He had to turn the car in. So he got, he turned the car. I don't know. They had to probably demolish that car. They probably had to salvage that car, take it to a junkyard. Totaled. Probably had to get totaled. Anyway, so Hal Herman headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, less than an hour away. Oh, does Hal know that he needs to sing happy birthday to a listener as well? Oh, he's not. Do- he says he's not going to do that. No, he has to do that. He says he has. he's been sued for singing that song before. No, no, he, he has to do it. Hey, Andrew. Well, you're going to have to talk to him about it. Andrew, I need a good happy birthday instrumental bed for Hal Herman, okay? Can you get that done for me? Copyright free, please? No, no. Happy birthday is in the public domain now. And how did Hal get sued? We're good. Hey, is Andrew in there? Andrew, can you hear me? Yeah, give me a thumbs up. I need I need happy birthday. So uh, Hal Herman headlines about 8 o'clock this morning. Oh, you know what's coming up at about uh, 730? What? A local TV reporter from Channel 8. Do you know uh, Masa Saidi? She's like... Uh, like Consumer re- sounds report. familiar. It, so, yeah, Masa Saidi. No, somebody made me aware of this. She had a Christmas tree in her house, and it caused a massive insect infestation in her house. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Ew. Yeah. She's gonna join us at like seven thirty with a Christmas tree warning. Yeah, you have to shake those trees. Oh, yeah. at the lot, hey, make them shake them. We had the story yesterday about the owl. It was an owl in someone's house for four days before it was discovered that was in their Christmas tree. Man, crazy stuff's going on. And, and you know, prices of Christmas trees are going through the roof as well. And I got to continue with the early morons in the news. Uh, oh, a bunch of local stuff, man. I don't know what the hell's going on here. A woman, 64, was struck in the face by uh, a pork product. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, pork products. Here please locally. be sausage. Yeah, here in St. Petersburg. Yeah, a judge has ordered. Did you say please be sausage? Because I mean, it's just a funnier story. Roxanne's just going down her favorite things of getting smacked in the face it, with. It was. <laughs> it was sausage, Roxanne. Yes, yes. yes it, it just, it, it it just was. gives such a great visual to the story. Anytime judge here talk. locally. Uh oh. A judge here locally has ordered a St. Pete man to have no contact with his wife. After striking her in the face with sausage. I mean, bacon just wouldn't have the same effect. Are we talking uh, Jimmy Dean? Uh, during a verbal altercation, Ray Allen, 61, here in St. Petersburg, threw a sausage. I'm sure it was pork. I'm sure she got porked in the face. Threw the sausage at his spouse. The said sausage then struck the wife, 64-year-old woman, in the right side of her face, according to the arrest report. It's a good throw. EMS workers responded to the home here in St. Petersburg, washed the victim's eye out with saline solution. It might have been a spicy sausage. Uh, and then Alan was arrested for domestic battery. I knew a girl that poked in the eye with a sausage. It's not funny. <laughs> sure you did. have to wash it out. An eye patch. Yeah. The, this is not domestic battery. That's where you throw a Duracell or an Energizer at somebody, and that's not funny. You know, like uh, you know, locks in a sock or batteries in a sock. That's mm, not. No. Yeah. So this is a domestic sausage. Listen, sausage yeah, I, in a sock is yeah. no fun either. Uh, listen, sausage in a sock is a lot better than a lock in a sock or batteries in a sock. I'm with you. Yeah. Sausage in a sock. Well, never mind. I was going to tell uh, a story from no, high let, let's, let's not. So Ray Allen was booked into the Pinellas County Jail, released. Uh, the next day, on his own recognizance, posted a bond, pleaded guilty to misdemeanor charges. Uh, circuit 
court judge issued an order borrowing him from contacting the victim. So I don't know, like husband, wife, they're what? I, I guess busted up right now because of a a sausage attack here in St. Petersburg. Sausage is no laughing matter, people. It, it is not. No. And Fester just thinks this is a travesty because how could you waste sausage like that? I want more details Tell on you the what, sausage. Fester would pick that sausage up off the floor and eat it. Dude, I'd just wipe it off. It's, just, it's perfectly just fine. Run it out of the sink. That's it. Just, just give it a run, dog. run it out. It's got that protective membrane layer. That It's the, called the, a casing. Thank you. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> the, the, the casing. <laughs> All right, 714 at the MJ Morning Show. Hey, Roxanne, when we get back, uh, you're only going to be around for a little longer. Yeah, just a little bit. Because uh, you got to leave uh, because, what, your kid's got to sing at some school uh, no, holiday play? Is that con- it? You're conflating things. Yesterday, oh. I texted you she had her first singing lesson, her first real oh, singing right. lesson. All right, hold on. To the- so Roxanne's got to leave shortly. But, Roxanne, you were very catty with something you sent me yesterday. Oh, was you, I? Yeah, you, I, mm. you sent me something that I kind of picked up as being kind of catty. Uh, you know, I feel uh, like uh, I you I, attacked I, another woman. I, I did. I knew you were going to call yeah, me out for yes. that. But uh, but I was like, well, hold, but, hold, uh, it, hold on, hold on. Plead your case when we get back. Hang on. We start an hour and twenty minutes of. Was not, I wrong? Hang on. <laughs> we'll review. We start an hour and twenty minutes of nonstop MJ morning show. Next, and there's a lot of stuff coming up. Hal Herman, I got the the local reporter with the bug infestation from a Christmas. A lot of stuff is next. Don't move here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105.
five. You know, it was a pretty big concert announcement that was made yesterday, which I was all excited about. And then I heard they're not coming to Tampa. I'm like, oh, son of a... All right, so which... And Michelle's not going to be happy about this. And I wonder if she's going to make me drive all the way to Orlando. All right, I'll, I'll explain coming up in just a bit. I got a giant pile of stuff to do here. As we launch an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ, we appreciate you listening here on a Friday as we get ready to wrap up the week. We only have Roxanne for another. What is your drop dead? When do you have to walk out of here? 15 minutes. It's getting earlier and earlier. <laughs> what, 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 you told um, me you were leaving at 8 o'clock yeah, yesterday. No, 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 no. Yesterday you didn't listen to me. I said, um, you said, what time do you have to leave? I said, before 8 o'clock. I said before 8 o'clock. I kind of snuck the before in. So Rox- nice Roxanne uh-huh. has to go do something with her kid at school today. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I guess we'll talk about why you're leaving. But first, though, we've got to squeeze a couple of Roxanne-related things in. Like something that I noticed as you sent me this link last night with commentary in your email. And you were like, no, that's not that. That's that yeah i i mean i was just being very factual now, i wasn't trying to be a hater i wasn't trying to i was just I, i'm you gonna know. fill in the blanks okay. here like uh, match game 76 mm-hmm. hold on where's my little extendable um where's my little car antenna microphone like gene rayburn so <laughs> i'm gonna fill in some blanks right now roxanne sends me a link to a story and the headline is Lauren Sanchez. Now, first of all, Roxanne, you you know who it is. Yeah. Fester, Froggy, Lauren Sanchez. Who is Lauren Sanchez? I Lauren. know I know who she is. All right. Do you? Fro- yes. Froggy, do you? No. All right. She's not the noon anchor on Channel 10, all right? All right. So, I, I don't know who all she all is right. then. Because- Although I think that didn't Lauren Sanchez used to be a TV reporter, actually? Who but is this Sanchez not, lady? All right. Fester, who is Lauren Sanchez? Lauren Sanchez is currently the is it fiance of uh, Jeff Bezos. 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 <laughs> yeah, the you, human weird. You, you've said his name three times and you've mispronounced it every time. I'm not exactly sure how to it's say it after Be- all this. Bezos. Remember, like Bay, Tampa Bezos. Jeff Bezos. So it's Jeff Bezos's uh, girlfriend, fiance. Has he proposed? Did, did I see oh, yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, I hear she, that? Oh, she had a huge engagement ring. Did they ever get married? Did they get married yet? Or are they I still think just still engaged? Because right. I think we were so, he- heard about some lavish wedding. Lauren Sanchez is Jeff Bezos's woman. So Roxanne sends me this story. Let me read you the headline. But, I, okay, can I interrupt for just well, a moment? I've, I've got to read the headline first. Well, read the headline, and then I'll tell you about my commentary. Yeah. All right. Lawrence, no, I'm going to read the headline, then I'm going to tell you what you said to me. Yes, but what right. do you and I always talk about? You can't read tone, so you say it how you think my tone was, oh, and no, then I'll say no, it how no, I think th- my this, tone was. No, no, this email, and, and typically I talk about text messages and yes. tone, and a lot of people misconstrue, misinterpret, and that's what's lacking. You know, human communication is lacking these days because so many people want to text and not have conversations. Like the younger generation, like Generation Z, like Mike, everyone wants to text and not talk. Yeah, see, so, we talk amongst ourselves. You can hear how rude and snooty patootie we are to each what, other. What if we did this whole damn show via text and we didn't talk? <laughs> what? If, we're just going to text everyone our content. That doesn't work, does it? Hold no. on, hold on. L-O-L-M-J. All right, good. Okay. All right. So Roxanne sends me the story last night. Lauren Sanchez flashes serious side boob in a playful halter top as she arrives hand in hand with Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos at Art Basel event in Miami before giving his behind a cheeky squeeze. Now, first of all, Daily Mail and their AI written stories and headlines, It's that is a ridiculously long headline. But the bottom line here is it's a picture that the Daily Mail said was Lauren Sanchez showing some serious side boob. Yeah, and, and we can get into this. We'll dissect this. Well, I'm going to tell you what Roxanne said. Roxanne, with her note just above 
the link to the story said, this is not side boob. That is back fat all day long. I didn't say all day long. Read it verbatim. Uh, I don't have it here. Why don't you, well, you read? You read. You read it to me verbatim. Let's said, go right to the horse. I said, man, yeah. woman hater. <laughs> I said that doesn't look like side boob. It looks like back fat. And then I said all that money, and you can't remove the back fat rolls. But I, but I meant that in oh. a way like. Like, back fat unites us all. Who doesn't have back <laughs> no. fat? Oh, stop. We all have it. You were, you were being catty. Sounds catty, were, Yeah, but you know what? She's no, a, no. Why are you she did, What does she care about Roxanne Weiler's commentary? She's got hold 500 on. bazillion why, why billion are you, dollars. Why are you softening up? Why are you getting softer? I'm soft not softening. You That's are. what I said. You oh. sent me an email. Hey, I'll find the email. You, I just oh read it to you. Who cares? Yeah. Hey, is it our job around here to bring show content? Now, more interesting than whether or not you perceive I was being catty. Sure. I was being catty. I guess you I were. was. Listen, maybe I just maybe I'm was, just hating on and, Lauren Sanchez and, all and day. I, I like it. I I like the fact that you're making an observation, but it seems like you were unfiltered in the email, and then suddenly you're slapping a filter on I, yourself on the show. I just read verbatim what I sent you in the email. But, verbatim. But when you read it, you went. I, I, I have it right here. I just brought it up. Right above the link. Right. That doesn't look like side boob. It looks like back fat. Fact. Fact. Right. Okay, uh, like Froggy, Fester, come over and look at uh, two exhibits. I'm now, looking at it right now. No, no, no. I, I have more exhibits on I, my computer. I Take had Andrew. I had Andrew, our producer, pull the exact link, and it's posted. So, folks, you get to look at Lauren Sanchez, Jeff Bezos's fiance, or whatever she is. You get to look at the image. We've posted the exact link that Roxanne sent to me last night. It's posted. On mjmorningshow.com, if you go to the section, it's right near the top. Look for the box with the picture of all of us, and it's going to say, as heard on the MJ Morning Show. Click on that, and then it's going to be the top item, and you can see the picture, which Roxanne I think you were fair about, and you were being uh, very judgmental. But I, oh, I, I, we don't judge in this room. No, no, we just like we vomit when we see certain pictures of people. But that's not judging. I guess <laughs> but, Roxanne making the observation. No, Fester, take I'm, a look at my computer. Roxanne, this is sad. Ro- 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 Roxanne, yes. I'm praising you for your observation. I'm confused. Okay, so you're happy that I made the observation? No, I'm just saying that it's. I, I like Roxanne unfiltered. Okay, I found some side boob that I consider side boob. She's going to get some arm chafing. But we're not talking. I don't need that. We're only talking about the image you sent me where the Daily Mail says that Lauren Sanchez flashes side boob, and it's not. It's back fat, and you appropriately pointed that out, and I'm I'm praising you. Oh, okay. What the hell? What took a long way to get to the praise? I I like the fact... (laughs) I like the fact that you, a woman, that you're calling out another woman. No, I'm she's, not she's, calling out another woman. I'm calling out the Daily Mail for describing well, that okay, as that's, side boob. I, that's, that's not that's, side boob. Th- that's what I meant. That it's it's not side boob. No. I mean, but I don't know how somebody could call it side boob. I don't know either. But you clearly agree. It's yes. not. It's back fat. Doesn't it look yes. deflated compared to the other one? Like it's deflating? Like a balloon? Anyway, folks... Take a look at the side boob controversy on the MJ Morning Show and and go look at the image. The link is up exactly what Roxanne sent me with her her cute little catty comment. And it's on our website, mjmorningshow.com. That's mjmorningshow.com. I liked what you sent me. I love the commentary. This is a, I'm praising you. Weird. Yeah. what's, What's weird? I, I think Lauren Sanchez is such an irrelevant figure in the first place. <laughs> and guess what? She thinks we are equally irrelevant. Yeah. She yeah. could buy all of us. Bezos, she could buy Q105 uh, and send be- us all out yeah, of here. Bezos yeah. is going to buy Beasley Media tomorrow <laughs> just to fire you. All right. Bezos. And then, tank, I, then tank the whole thing. Roxanne, I'm, I'm liking what you sent me. I just thought it was... It was good content. It, it's accurate. It's a, if I if I wear that top and I have my my fat rolls hanging out the top, no one needs to call it side boob. You, you can call it what it is. You don't have any back fat. Every, everybody has has you, like pockets of stuff. No, everybody does. If fat I, unites us. My kids have cellulite, but if fat brings us all together, hold on, your three year old oh has God. cellulite. This uh, is so hard. <laughs> Right. I'm blaming you, MJ. I'm blaming you. What no. Roxanne sent me the content? Okay, okay we get it. Okay, all right, uh, I'm moving along. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, are you this gonna... is a lot of Lauren Sanchez back fat talk. <laughs> a lot. It's, it's back fat back chat. Hold it. <laughs> back, back fat back chat. All right. I got to make a phone call right now. Okay. I have got to get 
News Channel 8 reporter Masa Saidi on the phone. Somebody brought to my attention. Now, uh, Andrew, did you pull the audio of her Instagram? Do we, do we pull that? Uh, we, we should have the, the Instagram audio here. Uh, Andrew, did you pull the, the audio? Because I, I sent you the uh, I sent you the Instagram link. Uh, anyway, uh, Fessa, go to go to I, wa- I want to play this. Okay. Go to uh, her uh, Facebook page. I, oh. I'm sorry. Go to Instagram. Okay. Go to Masa Saidi's Instagram page, and uh, I'll show you which one to click on. Now let me get her on the phone. She had an infestation in her house from a Christmas tree that she bought brought into the house. And next thing you know, the house is like crawling with like bug larva. So hang on, let me let me get her on the phone. And I didn't see this until a listener of ours said, "Hey, MJ, you got to take a look at this. What happened to this uh, News Channel Eight reporter, uh, Massa? Hold on, let me let me dial up her line here. One. Uh, uh, uh. All right, let me call her up. She is standing by, waiting for our call. All right, just stop right there, Fester. I'll, I'll take it from here on the uh, Instagram. All right. Good morning. Masa. Hello. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Masa Saidi. Now, you're, you're a, a, are you that consumer, or, or what is your official title at News Channel 8? I am officially one of our three investigative reporters. There we go. So investigative reporting. And Masa, how long have you been at Channel 8 now? I have been there, believe it or not, half a decade, five years. Wow. Anyway, uh, I've seen your work. You do very nice uh, work on Channel 8. Somebody sent me a link to your Instagram about your Christmas tree insect fiasco. Let me play okay. that. Let me let me play this uh, for the audience. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play your uh, Instagram right now. Let me bring up my internet uh, little pot over here. And I want to play what you recorded on Instagram. All right, here we go. All right, Festa, where's the... Bottom of the uh, the picture. Oh, there it is. All right, hang on. Let me me refresh that. So I got to turn the mute off. All right, here we go. One more time. And here we go. Christmas tree. It's day number three. And I thought I got all the little larva bugs that I tweeted a picture of. And I came home. They still were everywhere. They were surrounding the rug. So I just threw out the rug. And I'm about to... Scrub the floors. I'm going to move <laughs> wow. the couch, throw out couch, couch cushions. Just do whatever I can to get rid of this. I This is a holiday horror story. <laughs> it really is. Um, I like know eventually they're going to be gone, but I'm afraid we're never going to get rid of them. I don't know what they are. They're disgusting. And this like... I'll clean them up and I'll be looking at the floor. I'll look away. I'll look back. There's a new one. Like, where are they coming from? Are they, they're not in the ceilings. I don't even know where they're coming from. It's, um, don't get a real Christmas tree. Wow. Okay. So, uh, Masa, what happened? You bought a live Christmas tree and then suddenly your house is covered with insect larva? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I got the Christmas tree at a very reputable lot here in Tampa, and they tell me that they have had almost no experience with this happening before. So as I was bringing in the Christmas tree, and keep in mind, I'm Iranian. This is like the third real Christmas tree I have ever purchased in my life. As I'm bringing it in my apartment, I see that there's like a nest in it. I thought it was disgusting, but I just figured it was like a little cute bird nest. Like, I didn't know what it was. I will say it was like sticky, like it had maple syrup. So anyway, I toss the nest out. I shake the tree. I bring it back in my house. The next day I'm on Twitter and there's like a little gecko and a Christmas tree. It's like a Florida account. I start reading the comments and I like see that if you have a nest in a tree, it could have ticks in it. It could have a baby praying mantis, like all sorts of disgusting things. Hey, Masa, we had a story yesterday that a family... They had a tree in their house for four days, and they discovered there was a baby owl in the tree in their house. <laughs> you know what? I'll take an owl, because these things, when they started showing up around the tree, on my rug, which is in the trash can, 
in the couch, like literally everywhere, disgusting little larva. Ugh. Couldn't get rid of them. Fun. Now, do you know what it is? Do you know it, what it's larvae for? From what? I it, it was in the tree. It was in the tree. No, but what I'm saying is, do we know what insect the larvae belongs to? Well, the pest control guy. And listen, I didn't ask too many questions. Listen, you're you're a an investigative reporter. I mean, you need to get an entomologist. entomologist you, yes, you need to go to USF and get a top entomologist to your house. He said, I'm not an entomologist. He's like, I've, I've never seen this. I think it's like a beetle larva. And I was like, sir, just kill them all. Kill, their, be, kill everything. And I don't need to know what this Wouldn't is. Wouldn't you tent the house? Wouldn't you have to like package all the food and get out? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I threw things out. I threw out my vacuum. I threw out several rugs. What'd you call Vomino's pets out of, well, pe- uh, what was the, uh, in Breaking Bad, was it Vomino's uh, yeah, pest like- control, right? You know, Masa, I... The guy, listen, the guy got rid of them. I finally have peace in my home again, and I feel like this happened to me so that I can warn other people about this, like, horrific thing. I mean, so there's peace in your house now. The larva's gone. You know what? I want to all break into, like, oh, little town of Bethlehem right now, you know? Oh, how sweet. <laughs> Masa, I'm amazed that you did not do your Instagram post in your reporter voice, reporting live from your living room. We have breaking <laughs> I mean, news. I, I Right after that. I mean, I've been traumatized. I don't like bugs. And I couldn't, you have to understand, I couldn't sit in my house for three days. Nothing was safe. I was just standing in the corner drinking wine, killing bugs. I mean, it's been a, it's been a tough ride. That's other it's issues. Really <laughs> Did you take personal days from Channel 8? <laughs> You know, I, I showed up late. I showed up late. And, you know, usually I'm a little late, but I showed up extra late. And they just knew not to mess with me because, I mean, I... I mean, I will look, like literally. I do not do well with bug infestations, and I had to be so strong to kill these things. Now, did the larvae did they hatch, or did they develop into a discernible insect? So, listen. I actually have I have video of them on Twitter. But basically, like if you had like not one piece of rice, like if you had like four pieces of rice, that's how big it was. But it was like the shape of rice. I'll never have carbs again. Oh. And then it was squishy, and then it would just, like, sliver uh, on the floor. Was this the lead story at 11 last night? Yeah. This is going to be airing on Tuesday. I was going to air it today. I found another woman that this sort of a thing. Oh, oh, so you're turning this into an actual package. Do you think I'm going to let this pain go without anything positive coming from this? I am warning my community. They need to know before you bring in a tree. God knows what could be in that tree. So You know, we've had numerous trees over the years in my house, and, you know, we've never had an insect infestation. Listen, in defense of the Christmas tree lots uh, all over the Tampa Bay area, <laughs> I'm guessing the bulk of trees do not have thousands of larvae waiting to invade your house. I think you just, you won the bad luck uh, larva lotto. <laughs> you know, and the guy, the Christmas tree guy, said that this my particular tree was from North Carolina. Yep. They're really great. He, this had only happened one other time. But for me, never again. We are going to Michael's today. We're getting a fake tree that has this huge sale. I mean, that said, never again. And I thought I was so cool getting a real tree. Never again. Yeah. I don't care if it's one in 100 chances. I will never go through this again. It has, it has been <laughs> A nightmare. <laughs> yeah, we are fake tree people, and we took it down last week, over the weekend, and it went up in no time and no larvas around the go. house. Yeah. There you go. And I used to judge people like you. I did. I was like, what is this fake plastic oh. nonsense in the house that's different pink? And pr- no. Well, if it like, makes you feel better, I judge people like you with your house riddled with larva. Well, you know what? You know what? Go ahead. The larva is gone. My house is clean. Awesome. Okay? I, still, I can't sit on the couch still. Oh, man. I'm like slowly getting back into like life. Awesome. Until you uh, have a family of raccoons that camp out in your <laughs> attic. You know, I prefer a raccoon to larva. Uh, they were or or in Christmas there. vacation, the squirrel that jumps out of the tree, right? In, in, in Christmas. Hey, uh, I, I want to just, inf- I don't know if you know about Hal Herman News, but um, Hal Herman is about to do headlines. And Hal Herman uh, is a, um, well, a former anchor. He worked um, he worked at, at 
Channel 2 Whammo News. He worked at Wavy TV 10 in, in Norfolk, Virginia Beach. And uh, Hal Herman's going to join us with Hal. Hey, Roxanne, hold on one second. Give him one second, One, one sec. So Hal Herman's going to join us with Hal Herman Headlines. And uh, if you haven't heard some of his, uh, like... Um, uh, some of his, uh, like, uh, identification uh, uh, sounders here. Listen to this. Hal Herman is on your side. Your side. All right, so uh, Hal, Hal Herman is going to have headlines in about 15 minutes, so I invite you to listen, okay? Who, me? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll be listening. Don't worry. I'm gonna, uh, I'll am gonna. i be in my car. I'm going to find this radio station. I don't have yeah. radio in my house. Okay, but. all right. So when you get in the car, tune in to 104.7 FM. Done. All right. Consider it done. Yeah, right. A lot of your colleagues listen to us, and once you hear us, you will be a regular listener to the MJ Morning Show. Well, I'm very excited. I am so excited about this. Right. I don't want to brag, but we're the only radio morning show Keith Kate listens to. Exactly. That's the only one. Oh, my God. I don't want to brag. Uh, absolutely. Really? I don't want to yep. name drop. Yep. But St- I am impressed. Stacey yep. Scheibel follows impressed. me on Instagram. Yep. I don't want to brag. And Gail Searins gave us a five-star review on Google. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, how about wow. that? Hey, Ma Society News Channel 8 with an insect infestation in her house. It's now gone. <laughs> and it's now gone. Thank you for joining us. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day. With the, uh, I guess, the dangers of uh, a live tree. Now, we've had bunches of live trees over the years. Never had a problem. All right, Roxanne, you are leaving right now. Yes. Have a great weekend. Wh- why are you, can you tell everyone why you're leaving early? My daughter is student of the month. Ooh, and la la. her, like, for living to give. Hang on, the three-year-old or the six-year-old? The six-year-old. All right, okay. It's a big deal. For being yeah. generous. Generous with what? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You have no idea. At home, she's lived to take. Yeah, because you demand. called her a little a hole the other day. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, she's, you she's really good at school. MJ, <laughs> our our kids are of this age where they are completely different people at home yeah. than they are at school. Are you gonna are you gonna get up and speak and say, listen? This is such an honor, and it's such a shock because I called my daughter a little a-hole just a few hey, days ago. Guys, it's it's how we are with one another. Some days there are good days, and other days there are not so good days. <laughs> All right, so you're leaving right now. Yes. Thank you for joining Go. us. For, Get out of here. Thanks for joining us for one hour and 48 minutes today. <laughs> okay, goodbye. All right, have, have a nice weekend. Drive, drive safely. Uh, uh, you're going to miss Hal Herman headlines in a few minutes. She's He's in listen. the hallway. She's, Say bye to him. She's going to listen. Give him a big kiss. Now we're, we're all testosterone for the rest of the show. It's you know we, we need some uh, do we some estrogen. Absolutely. Do we? All right. I'll uh, fit uh, in anyway. Hey, um, Hal Herman headlines. <laughs> <laughs> Hal Hal Herman headlines coming up in just a matter of minutes. And oh, is oh Andrew? Did you get me a, a, a nice happy birthday bed? Do we have that? I guess uh, Hal, Hal says he's refusing to do that. No, you're, gonna Hal, have to, you're gonna have to talk him into that. I have a listener. He says it reminds him of when he worked back at uh, Hops. I, I, <laughs> wait, he was a manager there. Wait a minute, Hal, Hal Herman was a manager at Hops. Yeah, who do you think came up with the bread with the cream little, on it? The little rolls with the glaze. Yeah, with the glaze. Little croissants with the glaze. Uh, he invented nice. that. Anyway, folks, we're minutes away from Hal Herman oh. headlines. I stand by here on the MJ Morning Show on Q- Q105. Holy moly. Hey, I mentioned this earlier today. Um, let me see if Michelle texted me because I invited all of our listeners to join us. I don't know why you would have done that. Yeah, you're an idiot. That's really what, dumb. What do you mean I'm an idiot? I mean, well, why would you? you you're going to have a nice lunch with your wife. You're going to invent or invite a bunch of... Hey, MJ, I've, I've been listening for 30 years. I want you to know. Bunch of I, hills I, have I, eyes, I, freaks. I'm just going to sit hang, over there in the corner and watch you eat your lunch on, with your wife. Hang on. <laughs> Michelle and I are having our lunch date today. We're not doing dinner date tonight. We're doing lunch date. Hey, MJ, you chew funny. Hey. Uh, Hello. Hey, Michelle's mo- pretty hot good today. Good morning, hey. Michelle, my lovely bride. Mm-hmm. Hey, so the guys are giving me crap because I mentioned that we're having a lunch date today and not a dinner date. Mm-hmm. And that you made a suggestion that we go where? No one has slice house. Yep. So M- Michelle made the suggestion. Hey, you know what? Let's switch things up. You hear that hesitation yeah. in her voice? You see how long it took her to say the place? Because she's thinking, do I really want to say on the radio where I'm going to lunch today? <laughs> Michelle, an hour ago, MJ had no problem saying, hey, if you're in the area, come by to my date lunch with Michelle at Nona Slice House. 
So Michelle had a good idea. It's like, you know what? Let's mix things up right after the morning show. You know, settle down. You know, do all the wrap-up stuff today. The weekend's here for us. You know, I, I just do one show a day now. It feels wonderful after 22 years of doing two shows every day. And so now I'm free to have lunch with Michelle. And Michelle said, you know what? Let's, we, we had a great, uh, you know, experience at the Nona Slice House. I've been meaning to try it for a long, long time. And we finally went, I don't know, four or five months ago and had a great, we ordered every one of their pizzas. They have, they make three different pies. They make a New York slice, they make the Neapolitan, and they make the Detroit style. And we ordered all three of them so I could try them. I don't and, think we'll be doing that today. Uh, I want to, maybe order two today because we want to bring. Julian with us last time. Oh, that, oh, that's true. Julian was okay. here and he's a little garbage disposal. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Now, Michelle said, hey, let's do lunch at Nona Slice House. Uh, on Fridays, they open at noon for lunch. And the guys are giving me crap because I said to listeners, I said, hey, listen, if you want to come by, if you want to have pizza and have lunch at the Nona Slice House, which is on Main Street in Safety Harbor. And I said, hey, if you want to stop by, have lunch. I said, listen, you're not going to sit at our table. It's going to be Michelle and me at a at a two top. But if you want to come by, have pizza. Well, now we might not get the two top. Well, but if you want to come by and say hi to us, I, I, I invited listeners. I'm saying, hey, listen, we're going to have lunch in Safety Harbor at Nona Slice House. If you want to have lunch and say hello, then you're invited. And the guys are like, what are you, crazy? Why are you doing? And Michelle's going to be all angry. Hey, 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 Mr. MJ, it's n- 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 nice to meet you. <laughs> we st- Can I have a s- s- slice with you and your for, wife? For, Froggy, hey. stop it. Your wife <laughs> looks really nice today. Hey, uh, hey, hey, you're MJ from that radio show, <laughs> right? Yeah, hey, he so, is. Remember that time? Remember that yeah. time when you called that lady about that thing? Oh, man, that was so funny. That was funny. Oh, oh, man. Guys, oh, that was guys, funny. Guys, By so, the way, did hey, you see how hey, good Michelle uh, uh, looks? Uh, 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 fro- oh. Froggy, stop. Oh, so Fester. You're, you're the lovely wife. Michelle. I'm going to yeah. turn your mic off. Oh. She right. looks- I'm, tur- I'm turning both of your mics off. Now, now you're my... She looks all right. real good. All right. All right. M- Michelle, do you have an stop. issue? D- guys, Michelle's asking you to stop. Oh, what a right. pretty lady. All right. <laughs> Michelle, do you have an issue with listeners coming by and having lunch and saying hi to us? Not at all. Uh, hey, uh, listen, I uh, follow... Stop it! Uh, <laughs> my name is, uh, oh, my in- name is Edward, and I'm a big fan of you's. Can hey, I have a slice with why you? Why are you making the listeners sound like they're going to murder us? Hey, what, Mrs. What is, Michelle. Not gonna mur- nobody said anything about murder, Can Michelle. You help Just, me carry you something to my van. You guys from, like, Silence of the Lambs. Or, or t- Deliverance hey, or something. Yeah. Hey, right, nice guys, guys, you. guys. Hey, Mr. MJ, can you say happy birthday? Excuse to- me, Michelle. Are you a size 14? See, you're going to get on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys help me carry my takeout to my van. All right, stop. Guys, Michelle has no problem... And no all, all the listeners that I meet are phenomenal. <laughs> Not, Fester, stop it. Hi, Dude. guys. Nice to meet you. Big fan of the show. <laughs> all right. Folks are welcome to stop by. If you're in the neighborhood, you want to have lunch, uh, I'm happy to say hi. And you can say hi to Michelle and me. And, so. and then go to your own table, order your own food, and don't look at him while he chews. <laughs> you can look at me and take pictures of me while I shove pizza oh, in my face. You don't want to do I, that. I don't care. Saying that right. for your safety. Not right. so, That's right. like when you told the interns they couldn't look him in the eyes. I, yeah. I, I told That's every, true. every intern that. Which was completely <laughs> false. All right, listen. So Completely well, false. The biggest rule around here is not looking MJ in the eyes. All right, Michelle, I'm looking forward to having lunch with you today. At the Nona Slice House at twelve me too. noon. Well, apparently, me and you know. I'm I don't looking know, forward to hundred other people who show up, baby. Well, we don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll Can see. Can I bring my dip cup? I mean, stop, stop it, it. <laughs> Froggy! Stop! Hey! 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 <laughs> Can I have a hey, hey, slice with you? Hey! 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 Uh. Our our listeners are not mutants. We you stop? <laughs> not all. Them. We have great listeners, and you're invited to say hi to Michelle and me. All right, Michelle. Most of our listeners right. are not mutants, but I got to I got to run. Some of them are. Now I got to dress up. <laughs> no, oh. you, Michelle, you don't need to dress See up. What it's, he did? A, it's a casual. I'm looking forward to our lunch date with you and maybe a few listeners today. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and, and, and how's that? Now I got to put a bra on and everything. <laughs> no, you don't. All uh, right, Michelle. I'll, I'll see. I'll see you home, and we'll have a nice lunch. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, sounds like it's going to be great. Bye. Yeah, and what about the other guy? Hey, honey, how about we have a romantic lunch? 
you know who's going to be sitting three tables away? <clears throat> MJ and Michelle. So You don't want to watch him chew, trust me. You don't. Michelle has no issue with that. She's a great sport about it. So, listen, folks, seriously. It's Mich- hard to be married to a famous guy. She's got to be a good sport. Uh, Michelle and I are just going to have a nice pizza lunch. Uh, Nona Slice House, Main Street, Safety Harbor. <sighs> we'll be there when they open at about noon today. And if you happen to be there, feel free to say hello. Me and Fesh will be at Village Inn at 11.55. <laughs> Come by. Say hi. Have some pie with us. Yes. Right. We're going to split a moose cake. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Let me go get out. Look at Froggy scramble to go put his Hal Herman jacket on. The floor. on the, your jacket's on the floor. People love it. It's Hal Herman headlines. Because uh, Hal Herman has the facts. Yeah. Oh, but when Hal comes in here, I have to break the news to him. I promised the listener that Hal Hermid would sing happy birthday to a listener. Oh, man. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, where's Hal Herman? Get 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 Hal Herman in here. Time for headlines. Hal! <laughs> Hal! Sorry about that. Hey, oh, oh, everybody. Yeah, here. Hal Herman right. here. Hal Herman here. Well, uh, uh, here's lot. here's Froggy. All right. No, wait. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Here's Hal Herman. No, Froggy's a little hot one. I'm looking forward to this. It's uh, phenomenal to wrap up the week with. I got uh, good news. With do Hal- I look happy? Do I look like I'm in a good mood? I mean, you do. You look like you're in a great mood today, Hal. I got back with an old love of mine, an old squeeze. <laughs> yeah. We worked together back at Wavy TV. You know who she is. First name Goldie. 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 Me and Goldie Showers got back I'm, together. I'm the mean, Weather Girl. The Weather Girl. Wow. So How's, we're dating again. How's she's she moving into Tampa. How's she doing? She's doing good. Right. She had to. She lost her li- her leg. One. She leg? got uh. She got some sort of. She got bit by a Reese's I, monkey. I, I, but she. But we're dating. So I have a friend who's who's dating an amputee. He says that's the way to go. Uh, it's fun. I tell you, it's fun. What's the matter with you guys? So right. Goldie, this is the first time she's here in my. Headline uh, update, Hal Herman headline. All right, now. Yes. I have something I need to share. Okay. <laughs> this is weird. I need you to sing happy birthday to one of our MJ Morning Show listeners. Is that- <laughs> oh my God. What? I can't do that. Come on, Hal. He just spit his coffee. I'm not singing no damn note. Trust me. I'm not singing that song ever again. It gives me... PTSD nightmares. <laughs> Absolute nightmares. Did you guys know I manage a hop Dude, restaurant? You, you just aerosolized. Oh, I got to the flag. <laughs> you just Am I aeros- be arrested for that? You, you just aerosolized. <laughs> You spit oh. on the American flag in the what? studio, Froggy. Oh my gosh. I mean, how? What is wrong with you? Uh, the American flag has another color. It's Eddie, brown. brown. So, yeah, so. so what was that? That was coffee. Go get that dry clean. Did you smell the whole? So, all right, so I'm not going to draw clean that. You think I can afford that? So I'm for, poor. Look so, at your shirt. I'm sleeping in Goldie's car. All right, so Hal Herman had a whole cup full of coffee in his mouth. Well, yeah, I can't sing and, happy birthday. And when I asked him to sing happy birthday, he spit it all out I like, on the wall. All right, let me share this direct message I got from Instagram. And, folks, you can reach me. I'm a ve- Listen, I'm inviting people to... Come watch me have lunch today at the, in Safety Harbor at Nona Slice House. By the way, I'll be there. I'm coming. Uh, that's fine. Me and Goldie. That's fine. All right. So I invite people to send me email. If you have some, uh, you know, hot tip, you have gossip, you have some content for the show, something we need to know, you want to say hello, you can always email me at mj at mjmorningshow.com or send me a direct message. Oh man, you! I smell it now. See? It's, it's that flavored coffee that drives me crazy too. Ah, uh, mixed with my cigarette breath. <laughs> oh my I just God. had a cigarette and a glass That's of milk. Awful. All right, and uh, you can always send me a direct message like this on my Instagram. I'm Certified MJ Radio. So give me a follow on Instagram, and if you want to send me a DM or an email, uh, my are you gonna read the damn thing? I, what? I am, I'm trying to catch my breath because you. Christ on a cracker! I'm sitting here waiting all day. Oh, man, you call, you. You want me to get the American flag out of here? No, leave. The, it's, I mean, the floor is a mess. We need a mop in here. We you aerosolized the you whole spit, room, but it's that spittle? flavored coffee that makes me have trouble breathing. Oh damn it! I don't know what to do. Is all right, here we go. Let me let me oh, read. Stop, pal. Stop, pal. Let me read the direct message. Hello, 
my wife Alyssa has been listening to your show for years. Stop with the Stop. Stop. For all you stop. That's wrong. Open the door. The Lysol is going to make it worse. Stop spraying Lysol now. Open the door. Oh, Lysol. Stop. Stop. All right. Hello. My wife Alyssa has been listening to your show for years now. She plays it every day and all night long. We absolutely love your morons in the news and the new Hal Herman Christmas songs. That's right. She has gone through a... Oh, now i got to breathe the coffee smell. Are you all right? I'm, no, I'm having trouble breathing. Oh, crap. i, I got an air purifier in my car. I'm just spraying Lysol in my face. <laughs> Sorry, mm. I keep messing up. This is a horrible right. for some showing. She has gone through a lot this year. Her mother getting sick, and I was away from home a lot for six months as I landed my dream job and went through a big city fire training academy during that time. Are you okay? No, I'm You're not. Right. During that time, your show brought lots of joy and comfort into our home. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Hal. Anyway, her birthday is coming up. She turns 30 this Saturday, December 10th. Well, <laughs> Saturday's the 9th. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, she's, so I, you're off. I, but listen, it's this weekend. So I don't know if she turns 30 uh, on Saturday the 9th or Sunday the 10th. Anyways, uh, either th way. This weekend, it's Alyssa's birthday. I'm wondering if you guys can say happy birthday to her no. or even better in all caps. Please, please, please have Hal Herman sing Happy Birthday. Thank you so much, the Fazio family. All right, Fazios. I think this is wonderful. <laughs> yo, yo, guy. Dude. We really have to go over these bits to where you don't ruin the air in the oh, studio. God. What did I do? I Sorry, didn't do anything. Like, I know what to do. Hang on. No, you, <clears throat> you spit the hazelnut smell all over the place. Okay, I got to use this. No, you're gonna, you're gonna. Am I ruining everything? That's I, actually helping a little. I bit. I put those down because now, now you're gonna make my papers go all over the studio. He's fanning so, us with these huge Hal, signs. Before we get to Hal Herman headlines, would you please sing "Happy Birthday" to Alyssa? I who, don't know the lyrics to that. All right, here we go. Hang on a second. And and a one and a two, two and, and a, a three. three. Happy birthday to you. Hi, happy birthday to you. Hi, happy birthday. What's his name? Alyssa. Dear, uh, Alyssa? Alyssa. Alyssa. I dated Alyssa. She was a bitch on wheels. Was <laughs> oh, I started. Started again. I'm sorry. I messed it up. You don't have to start the whole thing again, do said, Did you one more time? Right. One more time. Three, Take two. two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, little Lisa. Happy birthday to you. And this is when I grabbed about the hops waitress. Wendy, I grabbed Wendy's ass, and I got a sexual harassment lawsuit when I was a hops manager for singing that stupid song. Now, Herman's headlines: Tampa Bay's most trusted source for news. All right, here we go. Time for Hal Herman headlines. MSNBC has crabs. Hal Herman has the real news. Screw CNN. Hal Herman is the most trusted name in news. Tampa Bay's news leader. Hal Herman headlines. Fox News blows. For the facts, Hal Herman knows. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, at 8.05 on a Friday here on the MJ Morning Show, it is time for Hal Herman Headlines. Yes, nothing but the real news, the realest of real news. Welcome right. to Hal Herman Headlines. Taylor Swift just named the Time Magazine Person of the Year. She's decided, did you hear guys hear about this? She's decided to have her head cryogenically frozen what? so she can Hold live on. forever. Can you, can you say that again? She what? She's having her head cryogenically frozen. All right. Have you heard about this? A lot of celebrities are doing this right. in order to live longer, almost forever, as they're saying. Medical science discovers cures 
In the future, for living forever, she will undergo this procedure before the end of the year. <laughs> she will join other celebrities. I mean, the time's coming. Well, she's hold hold on. Stop, 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 stop. She's stop, having her stop. head frozen. All right. so you're saying that Taylor Swift is going to have her head cryogenically frozen? That's be- what the news story says. Before the end of the year? Yeah, so in a couple of weeks, I guess she's going in for the surgery. She will join other celebrities who have also had their heads frozen this year. Okay. A couple celebrities on that list. Lady Gaga. Can I get a ding for her? Yes. Cryogenically head is frozen. Lady Gaga's head is not frozen. Next, 50 Cent. Head frozen (laughs) as a popsicle. King Charles. Derek Jeter. B. Arthur. Head is frozen. Even the hair. Yeah. Even the hair. Jimmy Carter. That one's plausible because B. Arthur Arthur expired already. No, she's alive. Everyone else on your list is still alive. Justin Bieber. Head frozen. No. Travis Kelsey did not freeze his head. Froze his dick. (laughs) Eric. Dude, you I just, I just dumped that. You can't say that. Hey, my riders are out here. Are you, t- you can't dude, write that word in you, there. you can't. Sorry, I just go off the script. Dude, you can't say I that. I just go off the script. I mean, if dude. you put it on the script, oh. he reads it. It's not his right. fault. So, so try, did you put did you, did you think that little button? I, I, I hit the oh, right. son of a button. All right, hold on a minute. I might have dumped the whole Travis Kelsey thing. Well, it's very important because he's not having his head cryogenically froze. Hey, 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 do not say that word again because I'm out of delay. But uh, that... That lives on MJTV on our YouTube stream. I don't understand. And you can you can watch it later. It's a medical term. Or, I mean. or it's, it's, no, it isn't. no, it's not. Or it's going to be on. Pretty our, sure it is. Or, it's not. Or, or it's, it's my it's, sister's a doctor. Or it's going to be on our podcast. So I dumped it off of the FM airwaves, one hundred four point seven FM. But it will live on our other. Uh, um, outlets to listen to the show. All right. So I might have dumped the whole name. So Frog, I'm sorry. Who? Hal Stop. Herman. My business partner. Hal Herman is going through a list of celebrities who he claims have yes. had their head frozen already. Travis uh, Kelsey. I right, so this is what I dumped. Go ahead, but don't say that word again. Did not freeze his head, but he froze his sausage. His man junk. <laughs> Okay, so that's frozen. Right, that is erroneous. That is not. All right, anyone else? And it's funny because it's almost the size of one of those. Ca- you remember those I, I, candies I, I, that run a piece stop. of paper? I stop. Okay, right. Eric Estrada, frozen head. Hold on, Eric Estrada. Yeah, yes, <laughs> from chips. Yes. Oh, great. Head is frozen. Yeah. Barack Obama, Gary Busey, Flavor Flav, Gary Coleman, the entire cast of Abbott Elementary, <laughs> Vladimir <laughs> Putin, what? No, the and, Olsen twins. Hold on. Last but not least. Chris Burke from Life Goes On. Head wow. is frozen. Yes. I, no. Have you ever seen I, that show? The, you know. Nobody, A lot of ice needed. N- nobody on that list All right. is having their head frozen or has already had their head frozen while alive. Olsen twins had their head frozen together. <laughs> Once, for, for a little A while. twofer, if you yeah. will. Oh, my God. We got All a right. discount. So there you go. That's story number one. 100% real. <sighs> Spread it around. How Herman headlines. The whole cast of Because Elementary. facts yeah. matter. Yeah, the whole cast of Abbott Elementary did not have their heads frozen. That's a good show. Let's move over to New York City news. An outbreak has occurred in the New York City streets. Do you want to guess what kind of outbreak? What is the outbreak on the streets of New York? Diarrhea. You know why? (laughs) Bradley Cooper's food truck. (laughs) Apparently, they were caught using seal meat, illegal seal meat, (laughs) in the Philly cheesesteaks. That's illegal. (laughs) All right, they're from Antarctica. (laughs) Those are kind of seals that get clubbed in the head. The seal meat spoiled on the trip to New York City. 4,000 people have been hospitalized. The very first customer was Gigi Hadid. She passed away from seal sepsis. Bradley Cooper is on the run as we speak. Yes, that's a real story. That happened just yesterday. No, it's not true. Yeah, you can't use seal meat in sandwiches. 4,000 people hospitalized. Bradley Cooper. That's a real story. The actor Bradley Cooper does not have a food truck selling Yeah, he does. I saw the story. I Whoa. saw the story wait, myself. So, are you kidding me? So, what? according to People Magazine, wait a second. Fester just brought up a story from People ah, from People ah, Magazine. Ah, ah, yeah. Now I look for the seal meat part. Okay, so hold on. <laughs> the headline says Bradley Cooper serves Philly cheesesteaks at food truck in New York. First customers, Gigi Hadid and, and somebody else. Somebody Arena else. Shake. That's the one that dated 
Tom oh, Brady for a while. Okay. She is still in the hospital recovering. She is the ICU. <laughs> okay. But Gigi's gone. No, but, uh, Rest in peace. Wait a minute. When did Bradley Cooper start serving Philly cheesesteak? You see, you don't even know the news. We have the news here on Hal Herman. But, but headlines. But it wasn't, Go ahead and check out the story. It's going to be a massive lawsuit. He didn't use seal meat. Illegal seal meat from Antarctica, the kind of get club. Yes. More Americans get their news from Hal Herman than from any other source. Uh, wow. What else, Hal? Tim Allen from the show Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Do you remember that show? The yes. show is called Tool Time. Tool Time. Uh, is it? I'm pretty sure it's called yeah. Tim the Tool no, Man. No, no, no. Home Improvement well, was, the, that show. was the show. His show on the All show right. was Tool Time. Yeah. Tool Time from Tim the to, to Tim Allen Taylor. <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know. Tim Allen from the show. Right. Home Improvement, I yes, guess? Yep. Yes. Some stories are coming out recently about some of his antics on the set, his okay. behavior. Have you heard about this? Uh, actually, I did. Yes. So you will know about this. Apparently, he would rub his tool, <laughs> a.k.a. penis. <laughs> On I, Al Borland. I, I just You remember that, Al Borland? Dude, that's, that's the matter, dude. Al, Al Borland. I, I, let me finish my story. I had to dump that again. Why? Why? Okay. That's actually a medical term, but okay, he would take his tool. All right, you remember Al Borland? Al Borland would take naps on the set every day. Tim Allen would give him such things as a Roman helmet, a rusty trombone. You know what that is? And something called a hot Carl. I don't know what that is. <laughs> he once gave him a double eyed blinky and he would donkey punch him every day. Also, one time gave him something called a duck billed platypus. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but Tim Allen, under a lot of heat for bullying and abusing Al Borland. How about that? A blumpkin every day. That sounds like torture. <laughs> All right. One more story here for Hal Herman headlines. This one oh my is going to be Tampa Bay's Woo! news leader, Hal Herman headlines. Travis Kelsey. Yes. Have you guys seen how the NFL Network, they do the mic'd up players? This is the second Travis Kelsey mention during well, Hal Herman this headlines. This has nothing to do with his, uh, what was the other story? His stuff is freezing. Stuff frozen. Yes, his stuff right, being right, frozen. Right, go now, ahead. this go came ahead. out before yeah. that, obviously. Right, go, go ahead. Travis Kelsey got caught in the mic'd up moment. He forgot that he was mic'd up on the NFL Network. You know how they do that? They yes, 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 yes. Well, he was caught talking on the sidelines to some of his friends on the team about you know who. Taylor Swift. Yes. Taylor Swift, yep. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he admitted that he wakes up nightly to Taylor Swift just, and this is a quote, tearing ass, <laughs> dropping air biscuits all night. Now, apparently, that means she has a flatulence problem in the middle of the night. <laughs> apparently, in the middle of the night, she just tears it all. And then she also goes number two with the door open, always. <laughs> oh, uh, that's enough. And this. one more thing. <laughs> that's enough. Apparently, she suffers from. Outer hemorrhoids. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yikes. 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 And he was caught. That's all caught from his chicken lips on mic Up. You can look it up online right now. Right. Outer hemorrhoids for Taylor right. Swift. Right. Look Folks, for those at her next concert. Folks, none. None oh, of that is. All. None all of. of <laughs> none of that is accurate. Through. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Woo! And I. That was a strong news yeah, report. I appreciate oh, that. I mean, especially with MJ not even knowing about Bradley Cooper and his baby seal chicken Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> yes, stand. it's amazing. He's on the run, actually. Some believe he's in Tunisia working in a market. <laughs> None of that was accurate, folks. You're spreading lies. You're doing nothing but spreading <laughs> lies. Oh, I got to give a shout out to my biggest fan, little Thomas. He's nine years old. He likes to dress up as Hal Herman and run around the house with a microphone screaming at his mom. Uh, that's a true story. I showed you his picture. MJ, you remember? Say hi to Thomas. Say hi to Thomas. <laughs> Dude, stop yelling into the microphone. Hey, say hi to Thomas. Right, get say down. Hi. Get say down. Hi Hal, get down. Say hi to Thomas. Say hi to Thomas. <laughs> Hal is towering above me. Say hi to Thomas. Standing. Uh, stop. Say Dude, hi to Thomas. You're going to knock us off the air. Say hi to Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Son of a bitch. Say hi to Thomas. Oh say hi to Thomas. Oh, my God. Froggy tackled, Froggy tackled MJ to the floor. Let him up. Yeah, you better say hi. Let him say up. Hi. Say hi. Let him up. Stop it. Hal. Get off MJ. Oh, my God. Jesus. I'm out of here. This place sucks a roadie. You're fired, Hal. What the hell just happened?
fire. Get out of here. Oh my God. Just, he just jumped on me from on top of the countertop. What the hell's he thinking? Uh, Andrew, did you capture that on camera? <laughs> Andrew? We have to do it again. <laughs> He's saying we got to do it again. He called, oh, my God. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I think my neck is cricked. How? Violence is uncalled for in the workplace. <laughs> <coughs> what a rough what a rough half hour with F Froggy spitting the coffee. And, Dude, uh, I thought the roughest part would have been Travis Kelsey oh, freezing his <laughs> junk, but no. Uh, uh, Andrew, put your microphone on. Did you capture that? I could get what I could get because the cameras didn't show. Certain angles. Oh, my. Well, did you get him jumping on me? Yeah, that part is on there. Oh, my God. All right. Eight, <laughs> and then stomping on you. Uh, 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 all right. Uh, 816 at the MJ Morning Show. Oh, man. Are you okay? I don't know. I, 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 it's, I think it's one of those things where the pain's going to develop in the next 24 hours. Like you have soft tissue damage uh, or may, something? Maybe so. That was, that was mayhem. That was insane. The Allstate guys got nothing on, on. Jeez. All right. Wow. Uncalled for, Hal. Wow. All right. 817 at the MJ Morning Show. My wife is not going to like this. Def Leppard just announced a massive tour with Journey as well as some other acts, but they're not coming to Tampa. How close are they coming? Orlando? Yeah, Orlando. Ooh. Def Leppard and Journey announced co-headlining 2024 tour with support from Cheap Trick, Hart, and Steve Miller Band. And then the news comes out yesterday that they're, they're not coming. It's a 23-city tour beginning July 6th, and Tampa is not on the list. So here's where they're going. Also, it's, it's the real Def Leppard. It's all of Def Leppard. Well... Now, well, yeah, almost all of it, except for the missing arm on Rick Allen. So, oh, you know I, that's so, so, dude. No, but but Journey, I'm, you know, I I just I can't do Journey without Steve Perry. No, uh, just, have you heard dude, that guy's yeah, voice? I heard listen, listen, better. Asian the, Steve Perry the, is fantastic. A, <laughs> listen, a, that's, what he is. that's true. Yeah. Asian Steve Perry is phenomenal. He is, but. He's not Steve Perry. I'm sorry. Yes, Andrew. That's like somebody trying to imitate Freddie Mercury. Oh, oh, like Adam Lambert? Right. <laughs> Look. Yeah, it's I, just not the same. All right, both of you naysayers. Listen, Steve Perry ain't walking back through that door. This is as good as you're going to get. And this guy is awesome. He's not some hack. St. Louis, July 6th. It starts at Bush Stadium. Then the next date is Orlando on July 10th at Camping World Stadium. Then they go to Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, Nashville, Philadelphia, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Tour buses will all run down the Hershey Highway. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, Toronto, Ontario, Boston, Massachusetts. They're going to play City Field in Flushing, New York, and Queens in New York City. They're going to play Arlington, Texas. They're going to play Houston, San Antonio, Minneapolis, Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, Washington, uh, Seattle, and Denver wraps it up. And then through all of those dates, Journey and Def Leppard are going to be joined by either Cheap Trick, Steve Miller Band, or Hart, depending on the city stop. Oh, I want to see Steve Miller Band. But there's no stop in Tampa Bay. Why, why couldn't they get a date at Ray J? Come on, guys. That thing would be sold out. You know, and Robin Zander... Lives right in Palm Harbor, right? He, Robin Zander from Cheap Trick, yeah. uh, what one of my one of my favorite bands of all time, Cheap Trick, and uh, yeah, let me see. Oh, and Cheap Trick is not going to even be playing at the Orlando show. What? Yeah, what? yeah, so it's different bands. Yes, backing up. Dude, did you hear what I said? I heard it, but I, yeah, the, he named them all. The constant is Def Leppard and Journey will be at every show, all 23 shows. Uh, oh, well, hold on a sec. Cheap Trick is in Orlando? Wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Uh, Astra oh, no, it is. I'm sorry. If I wanted breaking news yeah. that's accurate, I'd call right. Hal. All right, Cheap Trick is <laughs> yep. Cheap Trick is going to be at the Orlando show. All right, so I don't need to call Robin Zander at home. I'll just wake him up anyway. Right. So, correction. 
Yeah, Orlando has an asterisk, meaning they will have cheap trick. See, they have an asterisk, a carrot. You know, the carrot is that little, little, little arrow that goes up, and then uh, there's uh, a plus sign uh, or an enye. It depends on what you printed out here. <laughs> but, and then, so it just it signifies which band is going to be joining Journey and Def Leppard. But I'm just ticked off. How, how do they not have a, a Tampa stop? That is weird. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I you know how a lot of these it. tours, they add dates later. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times they they backfill the dates in. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's possible they could add dates, so I'd love to see them add a, a Tampa show. That'd be fantastic. All right, 821 at the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> Dude, you you hurt my neck. Oh, my neck. God. I gotta, Andrew got it. All. <laughs> no, I got to pull up. I, 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 <sighs> as I saw Hal getting on the table. You hurt Hal. Dude, uh, you this, want, he wanted a shout out to a big fan of his, Thomas, right. and now you're okay. You won't even do it. This radio station, the equipment here, we are hanging by a thread. We're we're staying on the air by a thread because the equipment is so old. They promised me a new studio for the last three years, and I don't know when the hell that's going to happen. I'm going to go and, with never. But you're jumping around. <laughs> you could have knocked us off the air, Froggy. I was hoping for that. I mean, then, how, how was then, shooting for that? Then you jump off of the countertop onto my head? Well, you're the one that wants to go to Def Leppard. You don't think that's going to happen at a rock show? Get used to it, <laughs> bub. And that's how. That's not me. I'm very respectful. Have I ever done anything like that? Maybe. <laughs> but I won't do it again. Now, how? That's a different story. My uh, don't mix us up ever again. But the the video is funny of you guys. And then he's kicking me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when I, I saw Hal get I, onto the countertop, Froggy. Know, is this the this is your video? Yeah, I when I when I saw Hal stand up on the countertop, I'm like, I better that re Hal re record is funny. Some, vi some video of this. I pull my cell phone out Can, and I start recording video. Do me a favor. I need you to we transfer that to me. Why? Because I need to put that on my Instagram because I'm going to use that for my... Uh, Don't I gotta, say lawsuit. Don't I, you dare I, say lawsuit. I, I got to call Stacy Kemp. For Man, no. Accident or fall or Hal Herman jumps on your head, call We're Kemp out. Call, call Kemp Law. Where's Hal? Yeah. <laughs> I got to warn him. Dude, my, my leg hurts. I mean, you hurt me. All right. I'm a tiny little guy. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, moving along. The 11th is when? When is the 11th? It's is Monday. that Monday? Yeah. Yeah, uh, folks... This is interesting. Monday, December 11th, apparently, is the day where most breakups occur. Most relationships. Why? I don't know. That's like the day, the most but, popular day of the yeah, year to break up? Yeah, they're saying tis the season. I know why. And it surges on December 11th. It's right before you start buying Christmas gifts for your love. Oh, yeah. Maybe, Maybe. You know what? You might be right there. But unofficially, December 11th, has been pegged as breakup day, and it's been determined through full analysis that more breakups, more relationships end on December 11th than any other day of the year. I, I don't know what causes this other than maybe Froggy's supposition that it's... You know, early enough that you don't buy a Christmas gift for somebody and you Jeez. save money. Although Hanukkah did start last night, so, you know. You, Happy Hanukkah, yeah, honey, by the way. We're never, breaking up on Monday. I'm never coming home again. On the fourth night of Hanukkah, I'll break up with you. Oh, how, no, what's the dreidel, dreidel? dreidel, dreidel. Yeah, break up, break up, break yeah. up. I made it out of clay. So... <laughs> I always would. I would have guessed that someday in January would have been like January no. 11th because it's after the holidays and you know it's a new year and it's time to get rid of old baggage. Let me grab some calls here. Let me ask, and I don't know what kind of response we're going to get, but do we have any listeners that broke up on December 11th, or are there any listeners that are thinking about ending a relationship on Monday on December 11th? Do you have any insight? You know, go back historically to your dating life, and can you recall any breakups around this time of the year or December 11th? Interesting. Yeah, Monday apparently is a big breakup day. All right, let's go to phones on this. If you have anything to add, 800-990-1047. That's 800-990-1047. That's how you get on. I'm just curious. Can you add anything to this discussion about breaking up 
and December 11th being like a, a ground zero day for, for breaking up. 800, look, phones are ringing. Let's go to phones here in a second. Andrew's going to screen. 800 990 I'll grab a couple of calls here, and then uh, we just have a lot. We have a lot here on a Friday to get through. But I thought that breakup day on Monday, and we'll address this again on Monday because that's the actual day. All right, Andrew's screening. Let me grab uh, Let me grab line one. Uh, first, it's Trey in Tampa, and uh, see what Trey has to say. Uh, Andrew, can you put Trey on hold, please? I don't know. Uh, Andrew is like uh, getting into a deep conversation with I, I Trey I, over here. Uh, Trey's on hold now. Hi, Trey. Welcome to the MJ Morning Show. Hey, MJ. We neighbors. We're neighbors. Listen, yeah, I live in South Tampa too. Well, awesome. Right down the street. Awesome, but well, thank you. Well, let's say if you ever see me in the neighborhood, I, I walk quite a bit. Please say hello. Okay. Well, listen. Yep. I'm married now. Yep. I, I got to say that first because my wife might be listening. Okay. But yes, it's true that people break up before Christmas. I did because I did not want to buy Christmas gifts for multiple women. There, so Froggy had it right. Yes. He had it absolutely right, and it makes sense. It's cheaper just to buy one gift for one girl. What was the last breakup that you had before Christmas? How long ago? Uh, let's say four years. I've been married three years, so wow. four years. I broke up with two girls. It was two girls. I was. Oh, like you were dating two girls at the same time, and Whoa. you broke up with both of them on the same day. Yeah, and they wanted like jewelry type gifts, like jewelry. Oh yeah. And I was like, no, nah, like, that's too expensive. So that was your money saving plan was just to get rid of them. But then after Christmas, I called them again. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> A little post Christmas hookup. Uh, yeah. All right, Trey. Hey, if you see me walking around the neighborhood, say hello, okay? Hey, I love your show, man. I love y'all. I've been listening to you for so many years, man. Y'all keep up the good work. Means a lot to me, Trey. Thank you, buddy. All right, bye. You bet. Sabrina in Lake Wales. Sabrina, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hi. I'm just calling because I completely agree with that because it's a final determinant if you want to introduce them to your family and bring them around. It's not even just about the presents. Ah, that's a good point. So the holiday season, get-togethers at the house, uh, bringing that individual to meet your family, so that also gets you out of that as well. Yeah, because I started a relationship a few years ago, like right after Thanksgiving, and it didn't work with my family. I really saw like a different, and we broke up like right after New Year's. So it was just like, I thought we were going to go somewhere, but it's like, you know, we're not. What is your status now, Sabrina? I am married. Awesome. And how long have you been married? Uh, three and a half, four, no, three and a half years. Uh, everything going well? Perfect. Yeah, different guys and great marriage. Awesome. Thank you, Sabrina. Thanks for checking in. Uh, let me grab one more on this. Uh, Peter in Newport Ritchie. Peter, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hi. Hey, MJ. Good morning. Peter in Newport Ritchie. How you doing? Go ahead, buddy. All right. So, like, I'm in my 60s, right? And I've been around the block a few times. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I'm thinking here, December 11th, well, it's getting close to the new year, and I don't know if this is working anymore, or maybe they're not getting satisfied, you know, something like that. Okay. <laughs> and um, do you have one that you're going to dump this year, Peter? <laughs> no, I mean, um, I busted my leg last year. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I was trying to save a cat, and I busted my leg. So I'm kind of... <laughs> All right. Let's get... What, you climb there. a tree and fall out? What happened? No, well, my cat jumped over a fence, and uh, she she was uh, meowing and couldn't get back. So I, you know, four-foot fence, and I jumped over it before. Ugh. And I landed on my left foot. And I went down immediately. Yeah, I hear you. This was like on a Sunday morning at 7.30 in the morning. All right, Peter. Listen, thanks for checking in. I hope you're all mended up good. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, well, there you have it. So a bunch of callers agree this time of the year, so there's something to it. Yeah, I mean, and, I didn't think about the angle of I don't want to introduce this person to my yeah, family. And the, the I guess the, the statistical peak is December 11th, which is going to be Monday. Let me... 
take this and put this aside so we can address this again on Monday, the actual day. It makes a lot more sense now that we've talked about it. What do you think about Tampa City Council moving a little closer to a temporary curfew after all of the issues in Ybor City? How about that? You see this? Could. It looks like it's getting closer. Uh, I saw this uh, report on ABC Action News last night. Uh, Council members, members of the public speaking, city attorney speaking on this, and it looks like uh, it's getting close to getting passed that uh, Tampa police will be able to enforce a citywide curfew for teens and kids younger than 16 years of age. Yeah, 5-2 vote. Council members decided to take the next steps to invoke a temporary curfew. Uh, Council members Bill Carlson and Lynn Hurtak, they're a little concerned. They talked about the possibility of profiling, issues with implementation, how to address 16 to 20-year-olds as well. But the issue is, look what's happened. You know, the the Ebor shooting, you had a 14-year-old that was was shot and killed. He had a gun in his waistband on the streets at 2 a.m. in Ebor. Right. Then the kid that shot him was like, what, 14 or 15? Then didn't he flee over to the uh, east coast of Florida? They m- made an arrest and they've got him. You know, you know we, need, we need parenting. No. <laughs> I don't know if we need a curfew. We need parenting. When I was 14, uh, I couldn't even go anywhere by myself. Seriously. You got dropped off at the movies and got picked up. I got to go to Big Lou's and have a sleepover. That's uh, about it. I couldn't go into the backyard at 14 without a... Well, maybe I could go to the backyard. No, but seriously. I mean, it's a different childhood now than it was when you know other people were growing up. But MJ, we're, you know, if the 14 or year olds are out there, there's kids younger than that out there. Till the wee hours. Yeah, it makes no sense. Uh, but it comes down to parenting. And I know that you know, maybe a lot of these kids that don't have... Uh, uh, parents or a father, or what, whatever. But come on, you got to be able to have a grip on some of these kids. You know, I felt awful for the dad that lost his 14 year old, but, you know, I raised it immediately on the air, what, a month ago with the Ebor shooting. I'm like, why is this kid on the streets at 14 at two o'clock in the morning? Just a crazy, insane story. I just, I don't understand it. And I got a warning here. And, you know, I had an MRI. Uh, this year, you know, I've had, you know, I, I had a couple of scans this year, so I had an MRI. And the one thing I've always known about an MRI machine. one th- There's one rule. Really. There's one rule. I mean, just one. One rule with an MRI machine. I'm not talking about don't move while you're in the machine. That's, yeah. that, that's a different rule. Fester, what is the one rule? And by the way, Fester, you can't go into a typical MRI, right? I barely fit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a ham sandwich away from being restricted to either now they have open MRIs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, or but, equestrian MRIs. Right. So Fester <laughs> Which is what they use for horses. <laughs> exactly. They, they once had to put Fester in an equestrian MRI in Gainesville. They threatened to. Or uh the the Shamu MRI out at SeaWorld. Sea World, right. Yeah. Yes. All right. So what is the one rule with an MRI? Uh the one rule would be don't have anything metal. Yeah. Even in your body. I mean they're very very clear. Do you have any uh, metal, any surgeries in your body? You can't have any metal on your person. I Listen, I know of a story, and we talked about this years ago. There was a metal oxygen canister, a big metal an- oxygen can- canister that somehow ended up in the MRI room, and they turned on the MRI machine and the metal canister, you know, like those, like the size of those, you know, the helium tanks like at Publix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the floor ones. Okay. Yeah, you can come up five, six feet. Exactly. And they turned the MRI machine on, and the metal canister got flung into the machine. I, I think it took the patient out. It was, I mean, it was horrific. So I just had an MRI a couple of months ago, and I am just, I'm fearful of that. You can't have any metal yet. Empty your pockets. I mean, you can't have anything. They even ask about your zipper on your pants. And I mean, what all- if you have like a metal plate in your head or something? Well, then you can't get an MRI. You're, you're like just, Uncle Eddie. Yeah, you're disqualified, <laughs> cousin Eddie. This side, uh, cousin no, Eddie. Nothing over here, but yeah. this side. Yeah. <laughs> but listen to this: a woman in Wisconsin 
got shot in the butt because she had a gun in her pocket, in her back pocket. She had a gun when she went into the MRI machine for a scan. What is the matter with this woman? The magnetational pull engaged the trigger? Yes, an unidentified Wisconsin woman was left with uh, additional holes in her butt. Oh! (laughs) After she took a loaded firearm into an MRI machine... uh, this is according to the FDA. The story is just coming out. It happened a couple of months ago, but this is just being reported by the FDA. 57-year-old woman had a handgun concealed on her person as she slid into the bore of the MRI. You lie down, they push you into the tube. When the machine's magnets engaged, the metal trigger on the gun engaged and shot her in the head. That's crazy. What the heck? The patient, listen, this is from the FDA statement. Patient received a gunshot wound in the right buttock area. According to the FDA, the patient was examined by a physician at the site who described the entry and exit holes as very small and superficial. She might have had like a 22 or something or you know, a little but, Saturday night special. But if it's in your pocket and it shoots yeah. through your butt, I mean, it goes... She got lucky. Side it, cheek to side cheek. But it, who knows where that bullet could have gone. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. Luckily, it's more like a, a buttocks flesh wound and not very deep. So this could have been all... She got lucky. But what kind of an imbecile goes into an MRI machine with a gun in their pocket? Who does that? I mean, they don't specifically ask that question. Do you have a gun in your pocket? Well, oh. anything metal. You can't have anything metal. No, no metal, just this gun. Apparently, she underwent the routine screening for metal objects, which is pretty much they ask you numerous times, any metal on you, and you know they look you up and down. Um, and the MRI, which is a magnetic resonance imaging machine, uses these huge magnets to generate the images inside the human body. And it is strong enough to pull a trigger on a gun in your pocket and fire a cap in your head. Wow. <laughs> Damn it, I can't come up with a CSI. <laughs> what is it? Wow, it's you, killing me. You can't come up with a CSI yeah, thing? Buggy Caruso wants to make an appearance. Okay, well, come on. You got to come up with something. Uh, you got to come up with a nice... Uh, all right. You got to come up with a CSI Miami zinger. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm, is this an MRI? MRY. <laughs> no, I, I've got I've got better that than that. That was the bad one. I got better than that. Uh, Hi, this is Casey Kasem, what? and I'm joining David Caruso what? on CSS CSI Miami. And guess what? The woman that took the gun into the MRI is number one with a bullet. <laughs> that was cumbersome as hell. That was <laughs> That was really wordy, Casey. <laughs> all right, right. <clears throat> Here's how Froggy's should have gone. Yeah, okay. one, go ahead. Is this an MRI or an MR die? <laughs> that's good. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That was, that was solid. Uh, I think that's enough of that. I got to move along. Uh, I've got a story about a guy that Froggy went to school with. Oh, John Hanley? <laughs> no. John. <laughs> Wait to get a name like just obscure people. Alan Bonus? No. Uh, Jeremiah Gargagliano? Uh, Jay no, Vanderbeck? Nope. Uh, Scott Billet? Uh, Lou Peroni? Uh, Nino Stefano? Uh, Mike Poole? Uh, Dusty Elbows? Uh, no. <laughs> Mm, that's all I got. Is there anybody famous that you went to Tampa Catholic uh, with? Joanna Garcia, yes. <laughs> she was no, no. Yes. no. Um, all the wrong reasons. Uh, come on. Uh, no, she's actually very famous. Channing Tatum. Oh, the- <laughs> Magic Mike. Channing Tatum, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, My for those, former friend. Yeah, For those that don't know, Channing Tatum, <laughs> a product of the Tampa Bay area, and Channing Tatum, yes, the Hollywood movie star, Went to Tampa Catholic, went to school with Froggy. Now Channing has no idea who Froggy is. Wait, wait, wait let's not go that far, all right? I don't know who he is, okay? <laughs> it's uh, this, a two-way street, mister. This raises a very interesting question. Now, it's not directly related to Channing Tatum, but 
Channing Tatum is part of the story. There's a huge debate. This is like a, a big discussion on Reddit on one of the, you know, am I the bleep, uh, you know. The, so this person tells the story. They're watching Magic Mike mm. on an airplane flight. Never heard of it. Is it a movie? Well, it's, yeah, come on, Freud, you know. Mm-hmm. So this passenger is watching Magic Mike with Channing Tatum and another passenger was offended because of the the stripper like scenes and the the racy content in the movie but this raises a really interesting question because also the passenger then pulled the whole religion card on the other passenger uh for watching the movie but this is what's i think very crucial to the story magic mike was being offered on the airplanes in-flight entertainment system. This was officially sanctioned and offered by the airline. And we've heard of these stories in the past where, oh, you can't watch that, or I've got kids in the same row, or my kids can see that, they're right behind you in the row across the aisle. If the airline is offering the movie as part of the in-flight entertainment library, then you should be able to watch it. Then don't look at the screen. I mean, do you agree that if the airline is offering a slew of movies that you should be able to pick every one? And I don't think it should trigger somebody that, oh, that content's not appropriate uh, to be on the television set. Well, you can't predict what's going to trigger the, people these days. But. The airline has curated the movies that are available. So if the airline doesn't have a problem with the offering and then passengers watching it on the uh, seat back screen, then what's the what's the issue? So here's what happened. So this individual even said that they kind of looked around to see if there would be anyone nearby that would be. And I don't think a passenger really has to do that if the airline's offering the movie For real. on your screen. But the individual looked around and then put the movie on watching uh, Magic Mike, the male stripper movie. Uh, I guess it was uh, Magic Mike's Last Dance. Is that the latest one? Is that, I don't, is that, is that I the can't. final? Honestly, I can't watch his movies. I can't. I haven't seen any of the uh, Channing Tatum, oh, you, uh, Magic Mike movies. I, I get nauseous. You I, guys don't know what you're missing. I, I, are they not? Did they show his stuff? It uh, is art. But it was the passenger sitting next to the guy that I guess was offended by Magic Mike and some of the content, and the woman taps the guy on the shoulder while he's watching Magic Mike and gives him a piece of paper and looks at the paper and then takes a look and then... The guy's like in shock, goes silent, and the note read, if you want to accept his offer, you may pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner, and I believe you bled and died to pay the price for my sin. I believe that you rose from the dead and you live forevermore, please forgive me and come into my heart oh, you just got saved. and save my soul. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so that's on the note. And then it says, dear friend, if you would like to study the Bible, someone to pray for you, help with personal problems, someone to visit you, to join a youth group, a Bible, please don't hesitate to let me know. That's the conclusion of the note. Ew. Now, this was not handwritten. This was like printed out on like a Word document. Oh, no. So the person must carry like a stack of yeah. these notes with them to then hand out in various scenarios. Yeah. This particular holy roller had it ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's annoying. But you see the point here? I'm sorry. If the airline's offering the movie, you should be able to watch anything the airline is offering uh, in the in-seat entertainment. That's what I think. I think we're all in agreement on that, right? Yeah. I think they should ban all his movies. What, Ma- Magic Mike? Just, uh, just Channing Tatum? Channing's. Yeah, all of just them. all of them. Uh, hey, there's yeah. an update on the on the Florida Booty Patrol guy. Remember this? The guy who, the car looked like what? Like uh, yeah. Immigration Services or something? Uh, Customs and Border Protection. Okay. CBP. And listen, I see them quite a bit. I... I see, because uh, we've got Customs and Border Protection vehicles, obviously, that are at Tampa International Airport. And <laughs> I see the vehicles uh, on Kennedy, uh, heading to wherever. 
I, I've seen them. And a lot of times it's either a minivan or it's a pickup truck or another. And it's a white vehicle. And then it has like the green diagonal slash mark. And a dude here in Florida got in trouble. We spent time talking about this uh, some weeks ago in DeSoto County. They did take the driver into custody. Uh, now, in the incident report, uh, deputies said they spotted the truck at the Mosaic Arena on October 29th. Uh, the vehicle had red and blue flashing lights. See, that's illegal. You can't have See, those color combinations. That, that's, I think, what did the guy in. Yeah, you need to have orange and, like, purple, I think it is. Yeah. But the update, the reason why I'm doing the story now is they did uh, find the guy. They arrested the guy. But the update, why I'm doing the story again today is that he is officially facing charges now for the booty patrol truck. Oh, come on. Yeah. All right, officers. Yeah, The paint looks similar to the Customs and Border Patrol vehicle, uh, but it was evident that the truck was not affiliated with law enforcement. Uh, but the issue apparently was that he had illegal police lights on the vehicle. So yeah. that's what did him in. But other than... Other than you know having the see, keep the keep the red and blue police lights off, you know just having the pickup truck with the green stripe, clearly reading booty patrol and not border patrol, and not being a you know an official you know customs and border patrol vehicle, uh, you know, it I mean, it's it's funny. I mean I I give this guy I, I can see the comedy but in it. I give the guy a. Thumbs up. I give the guy like a total uh, A plus for creativity driving around in a booty patrol truck that looks like Border Patrol, <laughs> Customs and Border Protection. You know, I, uh, yeah, but it's the red lights, man. That's what did this dude in. So, uh, but the update to the story is he is officially facing charges uh, for impersonation. And. I, right. I don't think he would have done that if he didn't have the red and blue lights that he used occasionally on the truck. So that's what did him in. Hey, I've got an update on Cameron. Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Dude, At I saw the video of that. Oh, yeah. It is insane. It is. <laughs> Alan Ruck. Hey, bring that up on Fester's computer. It's just like the movie. Yeah. Alan Ruck, who played Cameron in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and also had a significant role in... In um, uh, Succession, he was in the TV show Succession. He's like the outcast son. Yeah. Are and, we sure this isn't guerrilla marketing for Ferris Bueller too? Hey, I have an uh, I have an update on on his condition. Also, Kelly Thors. Oh, did you hear what happened to Chevy Chase? What happened to Chevy? Oh man, you got to hear this. This is crazy. Uh, and it was it was Christmas vacation related. He <laughs> he was at a Christmas vacation movie event. And you're not going to believe what happened to Chevy Chase. I mean, that's one of the most watched movies this holiday season. I mean, look, Christmas Vacation is far better than Miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> any, any, any day of the week. An angel gets its wings. Any day of the week. All right, hold on. That and a whole lot more next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Stand by.
MJ Morning Show on Q105. MJ with Froggy and Fester. Roxanne was here, but left at 745 for some nonsense. 
What was it? Oh, stop. It's for her daughter's <laughs> day. I, deal. I, I, I'm, kid, I'm kidding around. She uh, won a big award. I'm joking. So Roxanne's six-year-old daughter won Citizen of the Day or something. I, what, what, what was it? Or uh, Student of the Hour. There, something to that effect. So congratulations to Roxanne's daughter. And that's what occurred, apparently. Ugh. And that's why she had to leave the show just an hour and 45 minutes into the broadcast today. Good on her. Yep. Well, listen, I guess, you listen, I did stuff for my kids. I, you know, I, I, no, you didn't. I guess I, I did. Mm, I don't I, remember. I absolutely did. I left. I, 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 I A couple of award presentations. I remember being like, I'm not going to that S- crap. Sometimes I would leave like at 930 or something. Typically stuff Never. happened like right after the show. And I think sometimes I left like, 20 30 minutes early but i never left like yeah, you let before the hat i never never left like in the halfway point or anything yeah. but anyway listen mom's got to do what a mom's got to do good for I, her she's I, a good mom i am not going to take it away from roxanne for going to some kind of a awards sure. celebration for her daughter winning uh citizen of the hour or whatever the award citizen was. On patrol. Yeah. Next hour, there'll be a new citizen. Yeah. Congratulations. So if you're wondering where Roxanne has been, if you were listening between 6 and 7.45, you heard her, and then, boom, she just kind of disappeared. Hey, lunch with MJ and Michelle. Now, uh, this kind of just organically came about, and I, I mentioned to Michelle, hey, you know, let's let's uh, maybe uh, have some listeners stop by. And, you know, she didn't object to it, and then she even confirmed it on the air earlier today. So Michelle suggested that instead of doing a Friday night dinner date tonight, that we hang out, open up a nice bottle of wine, we'll watch a number of movies, maybe try to finally finish up The Crown on Netflix because the new season's about to drop or the final new season's about to drop. And, of course, we were in St. Andrews in Scotland last March when they were actually filming some of the Princess Kate and Prince William era uh, episodes and they were actually filming while we were there last march to go see chloe because my daughter did a whole year at saint andrews in scotland and that's where prince william and princess kate that's where they met at saint andrews and they were literally filming we're on the side of the street while they're actually filming a scene with a drone overhead as uh, they were uh, cars were being escorted by uh, two motor uh, cops and there's a chance that you might even see us. I don't know. They even, yes. even see us on the, the sidewalk. I, I don't Were know. You dressed in period-appropriate yeah. clothing? Anyway, so we're going to... Yeah, well, it was kind of current time. They met... They, they met like 2000? Yeah, something know. like that. Yeah, in, in that vicinity. So uh, Michelle and I are going to have lunch today. We're going to have our date lunch. And Michelle suggested that we go back to that Nona Slice House, the pizza joint on Main Street in Safety Harbor, and that's where we're going. They open at noon today for lunch, and that's where Michelle and I are going to be. So if you want to stop by and have pizza as well, I mean, you got to sit at your own table. But I, I'd love to say hello to whoever stops by, and you can watch Michelle and I shove pizza in our face. Oh, it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah wow. So if you want to stop by, hey, have at it. Hey, Fine. kids, yeah. see that guy chewing a pizza? That's who we listen to on the radio. So you're, you're the invited. Morning. Michelle and I, date lunch. Today, 12 noon, at the Nona Slice House. Uh, and I, I didn't tell him I'm coming. I, I'm just a regular customer. I was going to walk in and eat pizza. <laughs> but I'll be there. If you want to say hello, uh, stop by. Uh, and I, I'm happy to... Not yeah. pay for your meal. Well, no. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm happy to take pictures. And you know, I love meeting our fans. I Let love, me get that for you there, MJ. I, I had a good month. I love, love meeting our MJ Morning Show listeners. All right, moving along. A couple of items, and I got to get into some Hollywood stuff. I got the uh, Cameron from Ferris Bueller, the Chevy Chase stories. Crazy. Get to that here in a second. I got some uh, idiot stories, uh, additional, uh, late edition morons of the news we'll get to here. I've got the 910 must hear story coming up momentarily. And of course, Rolling Stones tickets. We'll be giving away this hour here on the MJ Morning Show. Stand by. I'll tell you when to call in. First, though, I've got a bad teacher story. I don't think you're going to be called again for a substitute position. Stephen Canciani, 32 years old, out in Shasta County, California. (laughs) What happened out in Shasta County? 
he pulled down his pants and showed his buttocks and genitals to the class. I mean, was it more a, like can see, Yanni? <laughs> was it like a was it an, an anatomy class? Because no, it'd be appropriate then. No, no, it would no, not be. Not. What are you talking if you're about? You're taking anatomy. No, and the teacher's like, okay, uh, this we is just, what we're talking you know, about. No, come on, Fest, it'll be idiotic. Let's not tell jokes. A substitute teacher. <laughs> has been arrested for pulling down his pants and showing his naked buttocks and genitals to a class full of California sixth graders. Oh, yeah, Fish, that's great. If it were anatomy yeah. class. Yeah, make jokes about that. You have a naked skeleton in the corner. You get, you get copies of there naked you go. things. So, yeah, side with a pedophile. That's a good yeah, look. That's good. That's a good look for you, Fester. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a solid position All to right. take. Yeah. Right. Stephen Canciotti, wow. 32 years old, originally from Connecticut, was arrested this week on Tuesday after police were called to Anderson Middle School in Shasta County, California, after complaints by horrified students. The vice principal said that two students came to her office and told her that they could see Canciotti's bare buttocks. And that his pants were partially down. Ooh. What the heck? A photo appears to show the teacher at his desk with part of his backside visible and his right hand tucked in his front pocket. All these kids have phones. They're taking pictures of you, you clod. I need to see these photos. Yeah, the vice principal responded to the classroom and found Canciani with his pants and underwear down around his mid-thigh area. Ugh. What the? Oh, now we're getting it out of fester. Well, yeah. I mean, how much do you need to expose oh to my. accurately given an anatomy lesson? She told him to leave the campus immediately. Uh, yeah. Uh, escorted him off and then contacted police. Investigators took statements from several students that led to a warrant being issued for his arrest on charges of indecent exposure and annoying or molesting a child. I mean, there's a oh. there are pictures that were taken, and it's like, what are you thinking? His pants are down around his thighs. He surrendered peacefully uh, on Wednesday, booked into the Shasta County Jail. Do they still have Shasta soft drinks? Is they still have it, yeah. You can still buy Shasta? Yeah, it's out there. According to his now private Facebook page, yeah, it was public. Now it's private. Yeah, it, uh, he I guess graduated in May from the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. What is that? An unaccredited institution in Redding, California, that trains its students on the supernatural and miracles such as faith healing. Yes. Oh my God. Welcome does it have to a, class, my kids. Does it have a class on pulling your wing out? Apparently not. Um, this is bizarre. So Can't see on his online biography on a website for a religious worship organization where he previously worked sta stated that he has a passion for God and winning souls for Christ. What is this guy? But he's pulling down his pants? I point my junk to the heavens. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, on to... <laughs> <laughs> my ween is going to point to hell. Oh. Straight down. All right, that's that's enough, guys. Straight yeah. down. Amen. Hallelujah. Do, do you <laughs> have the image, do you have the video of Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Alan Ruck is his real name. He also played on the TV show uh, Succession. Uh, he was oh he was in Twister as well the movie Twister. Oh with, God, the worst her, movie ever. What was her name? Right. Helen. Helen Hunt. Yeah, whatever happened to Helen Hunt? She like <laughs> disappeared. Yeah, she did. She just evaporated. Where did Helen Hunt go? Paul out. Reiser killed her after that big Paul Reiser sitcom money. She's like, you know what? Screw this. Actually. Yeah, mad about you. Uh, Alan Ruck has been sued by the pizza shop that he drove through. Duh. He demolished the place. He did. He absolutely wrecked the place. Was he sober? I mean, did they test him? How did this happen? Again, we, we don't know, but he drove through. Let me just give you the details on the story. And he has been sued now, so he's facing a civil lawsuit from the pizza shop that he drove through. So uh, the police issued him a citation. That's all done. But he's going to have to go to court on the civil charges uh, after he drove right through the pizza shop. According to the lawsuit, which TMZ got their hands on, the owner of the pizza shop 
uh, is suing. Now, here's what we have. Horatio Vila says that he was stopped at a red light at the intersection of Hollywood Boulevard and La Brea on Halloween night. Vila claims that Ruck was waiting directly behind him in his 2023 Rivian truck. Without warning, Vila says Ruck slammed into the back of his Hyundai while the light was still red, pushing him into oncoming traffic and causing Vila to collide with another vehicle. As reported, Ruck's vehicle continued on a rip and slammed through Rafalo's pizza, causing significant damage. I mean, his truck was, it punctured through the wall of the pizza restaurant. Now, did Ruck have some kind of medical episode or something? Sounds like he fell asleep I mean, or something. I mean, you're driving fine, you're driving fine, then you just slam on the gas of your Rivian? Because when cops find people asleep, they always put their cars, like, in front and behind them in case, because they always, when they wake up, they hit the gas. Jam the gas. And listen, this is a Rivian truck. A lot of these electrics have some serious torque. Oh, yeah. So Vila, who was slammed into in the rear... He says he suffered severe injuries and damages as a result of the crash. Uh, doesn't get specific, but he states the crash left him with property damage costs, uh, past and future medical uh, care, pain and suffering, mental anguish, emotional distress, uh, consequential damages. The video is nuts. So that dude is suing. The pizza shop is going after him. Uh, maybe maybe even like the uh, pizza shop's insurance company going after. This is a big insurance matter now. Oh, it is. But uh, so you you get you get rear-ended by Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, that's that's hilarious. That's a, that's a big day. That's that's a big thing going on. I would much rather get rear-ended by Matthew Broderick. <laughs> Ah, this is George Peterson. Well, we've had a bit of bad luck this morning, as you may have heard. Well, uh, it's been a tough morning, and uh, we've got a lot of family business to take care of, so if you wouldn't mind excusing Sloan, I'd uh, appreciate it. There he uh, is. Uh, sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, you, uh, you, you just produce a corpse, and uh, I'll release Sloan. I want to see this dead grandmother firsthand. And it's all right, Grace. It's Ferris Bueller, little twerp. I'm going to set a trap and let him fall right into it. Ed, yeah. Ferris Bueller's on line one, Ed. Tough day for the family. <laughs> Elf. Elf. Rooney. Rooney, you jackass. All right, now our 910 must-hear story of the day. So every day, at 910-ish, I roll out an item which I think is kind of must-hear. Today's story has to do with bartenders... Kind of spilling the the uh, spilling the beans on what they never order. So bartenders say which drinks they never order, and also why draft beer is disgusting. Oh, I, can I take a guess on some of the drinks? Yes, yeah, serious. Well, hang on, let me. If you oh, if you want to guess, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Uh, Red Snapper, Kamikaze, Ooh, Long Island Iced Tea, Black Russian Fuzzy Naval, and the Sex on the Beach, Marina Planet Matter, Slow Gin Fizz. Learn to take them all on the rocks with a twist. There's a school to attend, and I highly recommend you call 1 800 Bartend. Was it those? those? Are any of those on the uh, list? I have no idea. All right, let I can me say the list again if let, you like. No, no, please, please don't. Let me do the story. So bartenders, they don't order draft beer, apparently. Bartenders say that a customer doesn't know the last time that the draft system got cleaned. Yeah, that's a thing, man. Which can be really nasty Ugh. in there with fruit flies and gunk. Oh, Actually, maybe fruit flies in a beer would be like a new flavor. It's not fruit beer. <laughs> so should you just order bottled beer at the bar? It seems that the bartenders are suggesting that. And also, don't order wine by the glass. Why? Because you don't know how long the wine's been open. And while some air is good for wine, it varies. Some wine is good right out of the bottle. Some wine you want to give it a few minutes to kind of air out and breathe a bit. Some wines take hours to really hit their maximum potential in the decanter. And then listen, there are many times where you over decant the wine and the wine falls off and it just, you know, hits the wall. But 
Two things. Draft beer. You don't know how dirty the system is when it was last cleaned. And then wine by the class. Then uh, this bartender recommends uh, sticking to a classic gin and tonic or whiskey and Coke. Listen, if you know someone that makes a great old-fashioned, I'm still partial. Michelle and I love a good old-fashioned. Uh, you know, listen, made with uh, bourbon or made with whiskey. Uh, however, uh, don't discount an old-fashioned made with rye. Yes. Yes, don't uh, discount that. At my house, at home, when I make old fashions, I make old fashions with rye, and it's yeah, uh, that, and that was you want to use that bread. <laughs> that was introduced to me some time ago, and it really makes a nice drink. You know, uh, but, I, I really like an old Zima, and then <laughs> delicious Zima, a Zima that was found in the back storeroom from 1989. Do they still make Zima? I don't, I don't yeah. think so. I have no idea. Anyway, bartenders also never order a Long Island iced tea. Ugh. It's on the list. We said it. Yep. Um, Yes. You've got uh, vodka, white rum, tequila, gin, triple sec, and it gives you a, a lot of bang for your buck, but bartenders say that the Long Island iced tea is just a juvenile drink. Which is why I order it. Yeah. Oh, man. Mr. And sing about it. What about, a, what about a white Russian? <laughs> uh, not on the list What about here. Fuzzy Dave? Not, not, Any of the other joke song? N- Red no, Stafford? No, nothing else is on the, the list here. Yep. Sex on the beach? <laughs> None of them. So essentially, they don't order beer, wine, or Long Island iced tea. Okay, just give me uh, one drink with one mixer, and that's it. Okay, great. Uh, if you order an espresso martini, don't do it at a bar that doesn't have the proper espresso machine, or else you're going to end up with a pile of junk. That's another one. That- those look disgusting. Everybody's drinking those. Yeah, they, they look, look awful. awful. Uh, also. <laughs> yes. Uh, like a gin fizz, for instance, unless they know what they're doing, unless you have a very experienced bartender with a gin fizz, stay away right. because of the delicate balance of egg whites, gin, cream, simple syrup, and citrus. It's on the list. That, yeah. So, you, dude, you might get a fast gin fizz. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I ordered a slow gin fizz. Sorry. Here you so, go. Heads up. There you go. That's the 910 must hear story. We have tickets for you to go see the Rolling Stones. That'll happen in just a bit. Keep listening. I'll tell you exactly when to call in for that. Now, as we move along here on the uh, celebrity story, I've got uh, <laughs> Clark Griswold fell off a stage. Wow. He's, he's an old man, too, right? Dude, I, yes. could, I could not believe he's this. 80, right? Chevy Chase, you're right, is 80 years old. And he's every bit as gr- of grumpy. Chevy Chase fell off the stage at a Christmas vacation event. He was doing a Q&A after the movie was shown, and he was in a wheelchair in Buffalo. So they rolled him on the stage in a wheelchair. <laughs> Well, hold on, what are you laughing at? You think that's funny? <laughs> you think hitting the road, hitting the holiday road in a wheelchair is funny? At this point, he's older than the grandma I tied to the roof. Nothing funny about that. Come on. And here's what happened. This is according to TMZ. Chevy was greeting fans Wednesday, this was Wednesday night, at Shea's Performing Arts Center in Buffalo, New York, where they screened his National Lampoon holiday classic, Christmas Vacation. For some reason, Chevy was rolled on stage in a wheelchair, but quickly stood up and started walking toward the crowd before he stepped right off the stage. What about the sound? That's a, uh, hang on, I, uh, you got to click the um, the mute thing. Hit it. So here he is. He's walking. He just got the wheelchair. Oh, my gosh. He just disappears he, off the stage. He just walked right. It's like, remember Kelsey Grammer? Oh, dear God. Oh, dear, oh, dear, God. dear okay. God. Remember Kelsey oh, Grammer yeah. fell off the stage. He hurt himself. Okay. But Another this is, jerk. This is Chevy Chase. His early career, some of the funniest uh, stuff he did was well, falling that, down. That's what I'm saying. I, I told Andrew, I'm like, hey, 
Andrew, our producer, find me some Chevy Chase. Like, As Gerald Ford. No, no. Find me Clark Ridge. <laughs> Dude, that's where he got started on That's SNL. where he started He falling. started right. SNL as Gerald Ford, and right. he looked nothing like President yeah. Ford, but he would fall yeah. down Th- repeatedly. Thanks for the 1975 reference. I could have had that gig. Uh, no, no. This I, is, look, we're talking about I, 80-year-old I, comics. I, I, you either get I, it or you don't. I, Let's give a 35-year-old reference. Go I, ahead. I do. I, I get... Uh, Fester, I'm just giving you crap. So... Chevy Chase, uh-huh. remember, he was all frigged up on back pills, too. Yeah, remember, Chevy Chase had a big issue. He was hooked on painkillers. Didn't his limo driver get arrested for, like, trying to buy pills or something for Chevy? Seriously. And uh, Chevy Chase attributed, like, his back problems to the fact that he did all these, like, uh, uh, pratfalls. You know, back like on Saturday Night Live, you know, he'd fall down and tumble and live from New York, it's Saturday night. And a lot of that was he played Gerald Ford, and Gerald Ford fell a lot. He tripped a lot. Nice reference, dude. Exactly. (laughs) So here's uh, Clark Griswold from uh, Christmas Vacation. (laughs) He's hanging from the gutter. I hear I remember, some of your sound effects in well, there. Well, you know, that's when the Christmas tree didn't it shoot through. Uh, what? What's uh, Elaine from Seinfeld? What's her real name? Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah, it, no, never, that's when he fell off the gutter and the ice, frozen ice, went through the. Oh, that's right. The, it, it shot through. It shot through uh, Elaine Bennis's uh, whatever character she was playing. Then why is it wet, Margo? <laughs> All right, so here's here's SNL. And now for my second announcement. <laughs> Live from New York, it's Saturday night! So, that's when he was uh, playing Gerald Ford back in 1975, so, I believe. Yeah. So, that's some good stuff. Yeah. I mean, if I'm watching Chevy Chase come out in a wheelchair, walk on the stage, and then fall, I'm like, yes! Is that part of the <laughs> act? <laughs> was that intentional? Right? Yeah, he are you, intentionally was going to kill himself. Are you, you, you going to intentionally fall off a stage at 80? That is commitment, man. Yeah, it this is. This guy's hysterical. He's nonstop. <laughs> he eventually got up back on stage. Uh, with the help from his wife, Janie, and the Q&A host. And the whole room had a laugh when Chevy's smartwatch, I guess... Would it go off? Yeah, something happened with his smartwatch. Uh, People in the audience said that he ended up doing the event with an ice pack on his knee. Poor bastard. But he stuck around to snap some pictures with fans and answer questions. Uh, Sources say that Chevy simply misjudged the edge of the stage when walking out, saying the stage lights on him blacked it out. He's doing fine, apart from a bruised knee. I mean, dude, 80 years old, he could have busted his hips. That could have been it. It could have been all downhill for Chevy Chase. (laughs) Hope he doesn't get all uh, caught up on pain pills again You know, after this incident. All right, final chunk of the MJ Morning Show is next. I have a lot of things. We just just have a lightning round. Of items we got to get to. Oh, almost half of men think that they could do this. Almost. And this is a very skilled operation. This is a very, very skilled activity. All right. I'll tell you what next. But almost half of men who were surveyed said, yep, I could do that. Experts say, no, you can't. (laughs) But could I? MJ will explain next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Stand by.
30 at the MJ Morning Show, and look at this pair of Rolling Stones tickets burning a hole in my pocket. Uh, we'll give away the Stones tickets in just a bit. Stones going to be in Orlando June 3rd. I uh, got a pair of your tickets. Could be the last time ever that you can see the Rolling Stones. So uh, definitely uh, historic. Uh, we'll give away the tickets in just a bit. Final chunk of the MJ Morning Show on a local sports front: the Bucks. We'll try to what? Seek revenge? Yes. Against the Falcons? The dreaded Falcons. Yeah, well, this is in Atlanta, right? It's uh, yeah, they're, a, they're up in Atlanta, right? It's, a, it's an away yeah. game for Tampa Bay. This is the NFL on the MJ Morning Show. Yeah, football! Sports! Yeah, so the Bucks are headed up to Atlanta. Is there a chance? Uh, what are the standings? So the Falcons are in first place. They're, yeah, they're number the, one. Right, with a 6-6 six and six record. Right. The Bucks are hot on their heels with a 5-7 and seven record. So yeah. they'll be at least tied because then they would have split the season because the Falcons came down That's to That's crazy. With the Bucks' sucky season, they... Well, listen, the NFC South just blows. I mean... <laughs> yes. You know, this... You know, Michelle is quite the football fan, my lovely wife, and... This season is just a bizarre season. All the quarterback injuries, all just a, a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, the Bucks are looking for a win. Sunday, is it a 1 or 4 o'clock game? What's the story? Uh, it's a 1 or 4. Uh, it's, it's a, a 1 o'clock game. Yeah, 1 o'clock game. Yeah, 1 o'clock game on Sunday up in Atlanta. You know, that's when I like my football, man, 1 o'clock. Man. There you go. Or four. Now, four. almost half of men who were surveyed... Think that they could do this. Experts say, mm, no, you can't. All right, I have a question. Yeah. Is it football related? No, it is not. Okay. Football it is not. related. Uh, no. Okay. 
It is not. Is it body part related? Anybody know? You know what? Let me let me put this uh, out to our listeners. And I, I think women would probably be very good at potentially guessing this. All right, let, let me put this to uh, the phones right now. In the final chunk of the MJ Morning Show, over half of men, I'm sorry, almost half of men, almost half of men surveyed think that they could do this. Experts say no. What do you think it is? 800-990-1047. 800-990-1047. Love to hear some of the guesses here. So what do you think? Almost half of men said, oh, I could do that. 800-990-1047. What do you think it is? All right, phones are already ringing off the hook here. Let me start with Randy. And I'd love to hear women on this. I'd love to hear our female listeners take a guess at what men think they can do. Randy's in St. Pete. Randy, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hi. Hi. Why are a house? Oh, that's a good guess, but that is not what I'm looking for. But thank you for guessing. I appreciate it. Like with the okay. like with the uh, Christmas lights or with like whole electrical programs. I can't re-electric my house. Yeah, but I can hang up Christmas lights. All right, let me grab. Like every line is ringing in here. Let me. You know, I'm just going to pick this. Andrew can't even get them fast enough. I'm just going to pick up random calls. Hi, good morning. Who's this? Susan. Susan, what do you think? Uh, almost half of guys think they can do. Beat a woman in an argument. Uh, beat a woman in oh, an argument, Susan. <laughs> well, we all know that that's impossible, Susan. Uh, I know. I'm sitting here listening, just a laugh. <laughs> uh, listen, you're. Hey, that is a hell of a guess. That is a great guess, Thank Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Uh, let me just pick up another unscreened call. Hi, good morning. Who's this? Hi, my name's Mike. How are you, Mike? We're great. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Trinity, up in. Newport Richie. I know where it is. All right. What do you think almost half of guys think they can do? Well, I think I may have read this one as well. So I want to say land a plane with uh, tower assistance. What? Yep. That, that is 100% right. Victor, hold on a sec. Let me what? conference. Yeah, there's another call on hold that was screened. So hang on a minute. That's, uh, that's uh, who did I pick up? I picked up line four. All right. Anyway, hey, thanks for that. Is 100% right. Thank you. But look at all these calls. Uh, they, they must have seen it. Uh, let me grant Victor. Victor is uh, on I-75. Victor, you also were going to guess land the plane, right? Yes, sir. Did you see the story? I did not. I happen to be a pilot, though, for real. Oh, what kind Everybody of, says they can. Yeah, what kind of pilot are you? Uh, fixed wing, private. Excellent. Hey, I'm going to play an audio chunk here in a minute, so turn your radio up. Victor, good guess. Thank you. Uh, also, Ryan in Newport Ritchie had the right answer. Ryan, you knew it was land the plane, right? Yeah, I heard it on the radio yesterday. Yep. I had it in the pile yesterday. I just didn't get around to it. Ryan, you're 100% right. Gary in Newport Ritchie also had the correct answer. Gary, you thought land good the plane. Morning. Hey, good morning, buddy. Land the plane. Yep. yep. Land the plane for sure. Yep. Say it again. Land a plane for sure. One more, <laughs> one more time. <laughs> I don't think for sure. Hey, Gary, do you think that you could land the plane? Yes or no? Well, I'd land a little single engine one, but not not a big jet like that. Now. Gotcha. All right, thank you, buddy. I right, turn your radio up and and listen to this. So there was a, a survey done, and uh, nearly fifty percent of individuals survey done. Uh, on uh, Americans uh, who thought that they could land a passenger plane safely with air traffic control guidance in the event of an emergency. Like both the pilots had the fish. Yeah, and, right. yeah. <laughs> Something wrong with the fish. Striker comes up from <laughs> yeah. the back. Yeah, exactly. But uh, this, is, this is a cool story. And look, we've seen the TV shows and the movies where the passenger is, is you know, talk they get the experts from the airline up on the radio and the tower there and you see the button that says this and the that and the you know you see the the uh the the, the reverse thrust you see the, yeah so i actually landed a plane of course <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah. uh, of course yes a simulator uh in a simulator but but a real simulator and listen i don't know i i I know what a lot of the stuff in the cockpit has over the years. Let, let me just tell you, I have spent, uh, I think, 13 or 14 hours total in the KC-135 simulator uh, at MacDill Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, it's been uh, a while 
since I was uh, down there because I used to have great contacts uh, down at MacDill. Hey, if anybody with the Air Mobility Wing, if anyone at MacDill would like to re-invite me to come on down and get into the KC-135R simulator, I would love to come back to MacDill and do that. It's been like maybe 10 years, but I had a bunch of hours in the simulator there. It was fantastic. I love flying the KC-135R, which is, you know, a military version of the 707. Those are all being replaced with 767s. Of course. Uh, oh, the, yes. Yeah, the, the KC... Was Unfortunately. KC-45? What, what are they going to call that thing? Anyway, so um, I have time in the KC-135R simulator, four-engine, uh, you know, the air tanker, uh, based on the 707. And I also had the opportunity to fly up to Atlanta uh, with a, a buddy of mine that used to be a captain for AirTran and then became a Southwest pilot when Southwest uh, you know, uh, purchased AirTran. But I spent, I think it was five hours, uh, in a Boeing 737-800 uh, simulator up in Atlanta. And hey, the video's online. The video's on YouTube. And I actually, I landed a, a 737-800 at Tampa International Airport. We dialed up the airport. Hey, I've got the audio. Listen to this. This is some audio of me landing a 737-800 in, listen, not a real plane, but in no. in the Level D simulator, which is as real as you're going to get other than getting into the actual plane itself. Approaching right. minimums. Minimums. So I'm in the left seat. I'm the captain well, now. Good. Just keep coming on down. Okay. Keep coming on down. Okay. All right. 50. Pull, pull back a little bit. 50, 50 30, feet. 30. 20. 20. 10. Okay, hands up. Come and I just landed. Now I get reverse thrusters. I put them up. Wow. Are, are we, well on radio. Are we listening to you I, land a plane? I, yes, I landed a plane. That was uh, wow. that was me landing a 737 800. Okay. Uh, simulated a Tampa landing. On on one left. Did you, ever, did you still have the audio of me when I landed a plane on your house? In my <laughs> yeah, simulator? Yeah, in his simulator. <laughs> so was, uh, the video's online. Yes, Andrew. Have you ever crashed the plane during a simulator? No, no, I have oh. not. I've never, in, in any of the simulators, I never crashed the Boo, plane. Nope. no fun. Never, never did it. So, uh, I don't, could I land the plane? I mean, I, I've had, the, you know, listen. Would I know more than some passenger that has never been in a real simulator? Yes. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I could land a, a real plane, but I have done it in the real simulators, the real stuff, not the the whole Microsoft simulators. No, but in, in an actual emergency, they would come back and say, is there another pilot? Uh. And if they weren't, they would say... Has anybody <laughs> been in a simulator? And MG would be like, oh, yes, I yes, pulled I, hours long. Yes, I've been in the KC 135R and I've been in the 737 700 slash 800 simulator uh, in Atlanta. So you would have answered yes to the, I think I can answer I'll do uh, it. Uh, you know, again, I'm not going to be that cocky. I don't know. <laughs> cocky. I just know that I've. It's a, it's I know, airline humor I, for I know that I've. <laughs> I know that I have landed them in simulators, but the real ones, the real deal simulators. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, before we get out of here today, what time is it? Uh, 941. I got a little bit. You know what? Let me give away the tickets right now to the Stones. Let us give away Rolling Stones tickets. The Stones, June 3rd in Orlando. And this is it, probably. This is probably the last time the Stones are ever going to tour. And you got some free tickets right now. If you are caller number, eh, we'll go 35. Caller 35, that's 35. If you're caller 35, you'll win the tickets right now. Just call up 800-990-1047, and they're yours if you're the correct caller. 800-990-1047 from the MJ Morning Show. Uh, a couple of things on the celebrity front before we get out of here. Kelly Clarkson... Ah, Kelly Clarkson. I love her. I guess grossed Keenan Thompson out. What'd you do? Keenan Thompson was a guest and one of Froggy's former neighbors, by the way. Keenan Thompson lived right behind Froggy across the canal in, good buddy. in town and country <laughs> uh, until he got divorced from his wife. But Kelly Clarkson revealed that when she's running late, she brushes her teeth in the shower. And Ooh. I guess this gross uh, Keenan Thompson out, but I, I don't get this. First of all, 
Why would it matter if you're running late, brushing your teeth in the shower versus when you get out of the shower? What difference does it make? I mean, you can you're save still some time gonna, on the rinse cycle. I don't know. You're still going to allocate the same amount of time to brushing your teeth, whether it's in the shower or out of the shower. I, I don't understand that. I have never brushed my teeth in the shower. You, have you ever done that? I'm not the best teeth brusher in the first place. No. But, uh, How many people br- brush their teeth yeah, in the volume. shower on, on, on a regular basis? Here, put this audio down. I, I think I have audio of the clip. Do you have it? After this little commercial here. Keenan Thompson and Kelly Clarkson debate shower etiquette. Yeah, that's probably the audio bite. Oh, right. man, it's two hours and two minutes. They say, what's minutes. up with that? Here, put it up. Two hours and, uh, I'm sorry, two minutes and 48 seconds? about brushing, you know, brushing your teeth in the shower? Here's which, the thing. I don't um, regularly, let's recap. Yeah. Because we talked about this before. I don't regularly brush my teeth in the shower. I just, I do if I'm in a hurry. Uh-huh. Now, I do happen to be in a hurry a lot. often. So, <laughs> it happens often. So, it happens. Yeah. That's your, that's fine. Because that's where you are in the world. That's that. where I'm at. That's my I'm choice. on the whole other side where I find it to be gross. And <laughs> I don't do it. And I think there's another mention of, like, maybe washing your legs in the shower. Like, get all the way... You know, don't just leave your ankles out. Like I wash my butt in the what? actual uh, sink instead really? of instead of the shower. Yeah, yeah, that's, yes. that's what I like to do. Uh, I wash no. my butt first. <laughs> uh, we're up to caller what thirty four. Hi, right, the next one I take is going to be thirty five, and we'll say good morning to. Hello. Hi, who's this? This is uh, Sean. Sean, where are you calling from? Tampa. I can't get no satisfaction. Uh. Well, you can, Sean, because you're caller 35. You win. Wow, that is amazing. This is awesome. You got it. You're going to go see the Rolling Stones June 3rd, Camping World Stadium in Orlando, and the tickets are yours, buddy. Thank you. Sounds like you're driving. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm driving from daughter, uh, dropping my daughter off at school, but uh, still in the Tampa area. All right, fantastic. Hey, uh, hold on. Andrew's going to give you all the information, get you the tickets, and we highly appreciate you listening to the MJ Morning Show. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, he's on line two, and that wraps up the week with Rolling Stones tickets here on the MJ Morning Show. And I think that's about it before we get there. I have a bunch of things I didn't get to, but we'll go ahead and... Oh, you know what I didn't mention? I, I, you know, I talked about this early in the week, and we just never got around to it. About Chris Wallace, you know, the former Fox News Sunday guy, and then he left to go to CNN, and right. then so Chris Wallace was doing an interview with Adam Driver. You know, Adam played what uh, Darth Vader uh, in in one of the recent Star Wars movies. You know, he was on that TV show Girls. Okay, uh, kind what, of a creepy looking guy. Well, and that's that's what's actually caused some people to call Chris Wallace a scumbag oh. because he asked Adam Driver about his looks. And he's in, during the interview, he said, you know what? You don't look like the typical movie star. He doesn't. You know, I really don't have a problem with that question. What, why, why would that... He's real ugly. Yeah, he's a right, very right, ugly man. All right, guys, no, he, he's stop. He's a great it, actor. That, that is unfair. He, he's a phenomenal actor. Yeah, my wife loved him I, in House of Gucci. I don't think that he's a very ugly guy. That is unfair. Oh, oh like, he's oh, ugly. Oh, like, yeah, Fester and Frog, you guys are the epitomy of good looks, right? an actor. Right? And, and yeah. if I were, I would acknowledge that I am ugly. Listen, Adam Driver has a unique look. I would not call him ugly. But some people, look, the same folks that are angry at Chris Wallace and calling him a scumbag, they're going to go even rougher on you guys. Ooh, He's like very un- ugly. <laughs> She's stopping. That's, the, that's unique he, and ugly. He does not have a classic good look. He has a very classic ugly look. Wait, no, <laughs> stop it. All He's right, ugly like I, old like I Roman thought, soldier listen, hair. I, I thought it was a fair question. For Chris Wallace to say, hey, you know what? You don't really have the typical movie star looks. And that ticks some people off. And he said, yeah, I look how I look. I can't change that. So I guess it's helped me. Yeah. The New Yorker magazine called him a horse face? <laughs> what? Yeah, okay, he uses a feed bag. If, no, he doesn't if use If there a were feed. a role for a human slash horse, <laughs> he would be a contender. doesn't use a feed bag. Bring back Black Beauty. Uh, we gotta go. Oh, you know what else? You know what else I meant to get to this week? What? I'm sorry. Did you see the former Jaguars employee that ripped them off for $22 million? Jacksonville Jaguars? Yes. 
What did he do? Former Jacksonville Jaguars employee Amit Patel accused of pilfering over $22 million from the team's coffers in a scheme that lasted from 2019 until just earlier this year. How shoddy is the accounting of the Jacksonville Jaguars, which they're doing... The Khan family. They're doing very well this this uh, year, the, the Jaguars. Jags are having a good season. Jags are having a good season. But they're not having a good accounting department, apparently, because... There was a story at the Jaguars Stadium. There was a game, and everybody was in the uh, the suites. Yeah. And they went to go turn on the game, and it was a message from DirecTV. Please pay your bill in all the suites. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. the, the Jaguars hadn't paid their bill? Yeah. And then and it popped up during a game. <laughs> oh, man. It literally said, pay your bill. I saw a picture. That's hysterical. That's but why. I, $22 million I, scam going underneath the con's seriously? nose. He doesn't know it. Anyway, the guy apparently spent it all on gambling. Nice. All gambling losses ripped off his employer, the Jacksonville Jaguars, for $22 million. That's some loosey-goosey accounting operations over there, I'm telling you. Are they hiring over there? Uh, I thought they were. Yeah, I wonder if anyone's ripping off the bucks right now. Now with those Glazers watching. All right. Folks, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Uh, don't forget, Michelle and I, we're having lunch at noon at the Nona Slice House in uh, Safety Harbor on Main Street. So if you want to stop by, have lunch, and say hi, I'm happy to meet listeners as Michelle and I will be at the Nona Slice House, Safety Harbor, for lunch at noon today. Have a great weekend, folks, and let's be careful out there. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I I, I hit that one again. Hold on a second. Let me, let, me, let me end the show officially. Folks, have a great weekend, and let's be careful out there. There we go. 